It's that's, like saying I just think it's one of them things that I would I would have hated if I never experienced. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think like it, it's but it's not for everyone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's 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 not. And like some people, some people just uh, just shine in fights, and some people just fucking curl up and, and can't do yeah. it. Yeah. And it's it's one of them things. But yeah. the opportunity should be there for everyone. So yeah. like like the the classes I run at the gym, yeah. like everyone should be able to train MMA. And I've, yeah. I've thought a lot about this recently because. I want to make my fight team a little bit more elite. I don't just want anyone to be able to step in because even if you step in to, to spar somebody, you're sparring someone who might want to be world champion. If you step in for one amateur fight, in my eyes, you have to maybe either want to be world champion or be willing to fight somebody who wants to be world champion. Mm. You don't know whether that guy... So even amateur boxing, you don't know whether you're walking in there just to have one, I'll just have one amateur fight. Yeah. You're fighting Tyson Fury <laughs> when he was an amateur one. Like, yeah. you, you can't you fight him start somewhere. <laughs> All right, so the intros are out of the way for you two guys that are, are here today. We'll do the intros before you come on so we can talk shit about before, you, before we talk to you. All right. Um, so we've got uh, Mr. Davey Grant, fresh from a knockout victory. Yeah. Um, bonus of the night in the UFC. And we have Mr. Alex Enland, ex-Cage Warriors World Champion, ex-Gypsy's Dog. We're going to talk about that today. <laughs> and Davey's coach, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Davey, uh, first up, how did you do? Saw, really saw, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's killing now actually because I just had something to eat before I came through. Well, it may hurt even more if we make you laugh. Yeah, probably <laughs> will. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm coping with it all right. But yeah, um, it's it's been a nightmare. It's been a bit of an anti climax coming through, and I got one of the best performances. You know yeah. what I mean? And was that uh, a form to your career? Uh, I'd, I'd say I'd, I wouldn't say it was like the best. Yeah. It was, just, but it was the most fun fight. Yeah. Um, it was and it was the best result. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So. Do you know what we're going to talk about this today? Because Alex, me and Alex have had this conversation before about you have to be a little bit fucking mad <laughs> to be a fighter, right? So talk me through, talk me through. Then the f the one thing that I want to ask you was what was going on when you fucking like what was going on in your head when you fucking broke your jaw? Did you know? Uh, oh yeah, straight away. Did it's you? Like, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like in fights you get hit and it, and it doesn't hurt. Yeah. That one he hit us and then as soon as I dropped, I was like. Fucking hell, that one yeah, hurt. Yeah. And uh, and straight away I could feel that my teeth wouldn't fit together. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I knew straight away my jaw was broke. And it was the first round, wasn't it? It was the first round. First first, I think it was the first shot he hit me with. Was it? Was it? Only a couple of minutes in, Shit. dropped us with the right hand, big right hand over the top. And like I, I must have been I, like sort of out for uh, like half a second while I hit the floor. But as soon as I landed, I thought, fucking hell, that one hurt. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When usually it's just like it's more of a shock. Yeah. But that was pain, just like. Radiating from my jaw, and then so. when you just literally, I'm going to get on with it. Well, yeah, straight away, I was just like, started looking for the sweep, and that wasn't coming off. Started looking for the sub, it wasn't coming off. So I thought, right, just get back up. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, uh, the most time it affected me, right, was when I went back to the corner after the first round. Yeah. Because um, I was like, I, I remember just sitting down and just thinking, fuck, my jaw's broke here, yeah, and all I'm trying to do is put my teeth together straight. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and it was that dry in the arena in the first round. Yeah. And my lips were literally sticking together in the middle of the round. Oh, fucking and I could hell, feel really? it. I was thinking, fucking hell, it's dry as fucking here. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm still trying to fucking yeah. like... I'm and that's because it was where it was. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I mean, so I'm still trying to have a fight with this guy, and then I get yeah. back... And I nearly forgot to have a drink of water because <laughs> I'm thinking my jaw's not good together here. Yeah. And I'm trying to like bite my teeth together. Yeah. I'm thinking, right, it's going to be all right. And then I sort of snapped out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, I, mean? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So let's talk through um, you chunking Mr. Dana White out for the fucking yeah. for the cheese. <laughs> that was, that was, I was fucking creasing. Yeah. I was like, you know what he's done? He's won that fight. And the first thing he's done is ask for fucking extra, I extra cheese. I, 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 saw, I saw him, I think one of the interviews like, on the sun or one of the... One of the articles, and they were saying how cheeky I was and all that, yeah, and yeah. I felt horrible about it. But I don't know, it just sort of came to me. But I thought I, I, I just really wanted Dana to know because I know what the UFC is like, and I know they like it when guys put it on the line. Yeah, and uh, and I thought I've I've had my jaw broken the first round. Here, still fought two rounds on, gone toe to toe with this lad, and then knocked him out. I thought ah, I'm in for a shout for a bonus here. Yeah, so I just wanted to make sure he know that I broke my jaw. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because I thought it looked better. And that yeah. was the honest, honest truth yeah. of it. Because it's a lot of money, yeah. so yeah. I just did anything I could. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I love it, mate. And how do you when you get that? When you get that, what happens? Is they like, a, do they ring you up? Do they just give you a no, fucking? Do they give you cash? Uh, no. What happens <laughs> is, um, so I was, uh, I, I, I've been to the hospital. I went straight to the hospital after I broke my jaw after after the fight, um, and I got like all the the MRIs and the X-rays and stuff yeah. like that. And then I was back at the, I go back to the hotel a few hours later, but the yeah. fights were still on. Oh, so really? we were watching the fights and stuff, yeah. yeah. And but it was like this was like about eight o'clock in the morning. We've been up all night, yeah, since the last since the day before because I didn't fight till like two o'clock in the morning, yeah. And then, uh, and then I ended up watching the last fight and sort of dropping off to sleep. Yeah. And then um, I can't remember what happened. I think someone knocked on the door. It was room for the room service or something like that with our suitcases from the other room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, 
And then I noticed it on, I just saw it on Twitter. I think it was on Twitter. So oh, really? Yeah. That was it. I, no one told me. I just found out. Then no I was fucking like, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, really? I couldn't even get back No to one sleep. told you when you seen it on no, Twitter? No, That's fucking Twitter, mad, yeah. that. Have you been paid yet? No, nah. No way. No, I've, been, I've been paid for the fighting stuff. Right. And then I've, so I've, I've got I mean, me win bonus and I've got the me Reebok money and stuff like that. Yeah. And then the bonus will be the next one to come through. Fucking so I'll give you, just give you like... But I want to know is how much is Alex getting? Uh, well, we'll have to see. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, so talk to me, um, did you did you watch his fight live? Yeah. What was it like for you? Um, was it weird? It was strange because like the week of the fight, I was good. I wasn't there. Yeah. Like, devastated, yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah. And like, even trying to ring him the week of the fight, the internet signal was terrible. Oh, like, yeah. I was, he was just stressing us out more. And I was thinking, oh. Yeah. And I just felt like, I was like, Grand fight, it's gonna go one of two ways. <laughs> 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 I was like, fucking and, and I was, I was flapping then. Me and Melissa had been out at uh, one of our friends' houses and then we went home just in time to watch it and I was yeah. sitting there shaking. I, I was going to message one of the guys who was in his corner and the internet signal was terrible. Yeah. So I, I would just sat there, I was on the edge of my seat and then he goes out, hands down, starts training. <laughs> and, like, oh, <laughs> and then when he gets dropped with that shot, I, was, I sat yeah. up and then he recovered. He was all right. I don't know, it was, it was, I was hyper emotional during it. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah, like... Yeah. Had I been there live, I wouldn't have been anywhere near as really like, on a roller coaster because it's work. Yeah, yes. and I would have been focused. But watching it on the telly, it's different, it's isn't it? It is. Yeah. Well, I suppose. I suppose one of the questions that I was going to ask you today, Andrew, was like, is coaching whenever, whenever, whenever just cornered some like boxer having his first match? I always find it more stressful cornering because you can't do anything about yeah. it you like you're not in control shot, that's but it. then that must have been like even worse than that because you can't even give them instructions i, f I feel like when you when you it's like because obviously when you're in the corner you're there you know you've got to stay calm you know you've got to do everything right yeah you can't like let your emotions through because that might like really under the fight yeah. yeah so when you're in the corner you can do that but when i'm watching my friends are like on the yeah. telly or whatever from yeah. like the other perspective it's more like you're a fan yeah, and yeah. you're like whoa, whoa yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. and that's what it's like because you're not in that it's a different sort of zone what yeah. you're in you're having no impact on it at yeah. all are you yeah I, I just get frustrated watching them on because there's there's I just feel like you can't do anything yeah, yeah nothing, nothing at all yeah, and I'm, like, I'm just a passenger yeah, yeah. like yeah. Th there's nothing yeah. not that I feel like especially with Davey fights I feel like the influence is done during the training yeah. preparation that yeah. Davey's he's had the number of coaches, my training partner for a long time, yeah. that he does his thing, and yeah. my job's kind of just to to help him prepare the best he can, make sure he doesn't get injured while training. Yeah, yeah. Fight. It's a big <laughs> um, that type of thing. That it's not like some of the guys I coach who I know some of the guys who coach I coach every day yeah. totally depend on me, and that if I wasn't there, yes. It would. So they're not like Mike Perry, you will be like him next, taking your last, <laughs> taking your last in the corner. <laughs> well, about, when, the when, two boys. When we found out about the fight, he was saying to me, she was saying, "I can hold pads. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold pads. Yeah, I'll come down with Davy." <laughs> I love it. Like Davy can fight. He did the ultimate fight and stuff like that. It's not like yeah. like Adam, for example. Yeah. If I just couldn't be there to, to corner Adam, yeah. he would definitely fight different. Yeah. Davey'd probably fight better without me going, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. Get your fucking hands up. Spin less. Spin <laughs> less. Spin less. Spin less. <laughs> he'd be having the, he, without me there, he had the time of his life. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I knew what I was going for, me. I thought like, I, I thought this is this is a big fight. This is like the biggest card I've ever been on. First yeah. fight on Fight Island and that. And I yeah. thought I'm going for a warrior. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And even, fucking show. Yeah. Even when he brought me jaw, I still knew what I was going out to do. Yeah. And uh, to be honest, I think that if I wanted to, I mean, we both said to me, I reckon I could have just, I could have just controlled him, just took him down, controlled him, played it safe. Yeah. Uh, won the fight. Yeah. But. I wouldn't have had like the sort of war I'd been looking for. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, I knew yeah. he was game for it. He's not the type of fighter who was going to shoot. Yeah. He was always going to keep it stood. Stand up, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, How long a camp did you have for that fight? Four weeks? Was it? Three days. Before. Three days that I got cut and fucking sprained my thumb. Uh, and I couldn't <laughs> hardly Imagine straight. if you pull out the fight because you strained your oh, thumb. Oh, God. It was a nightmare. <laughs> you trained a little bit expecting to get a fight. Yeah. And then you had the business stuff come up and you were like, I'm not going to take a fight. Really, were you? Yeah. Were you? And Alex, I, I've got a fight. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got a phone call. I was like, I've got one. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because I, I felt like I could have started pushing, but I didn't. Yeah. It was like, uh, I wasn't sure what was going on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I didn't know if, it, if, if things were going to happen. Think that's short, I can't make to help you then. Oh, I mean, definitely. I mean, what it is, is the thing with the shorter camps is it's less time to get injured. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? 
<laughs> so like yeah. we usually have, I've, I've got eight weeks so usually I go into camp fucking full steam ahead like yeah. this get injured in the first week yeah. Then yeah. I'm sort of picking up the pieces for the rest of the weeks managed yeah. to get a couple of weeks training yeah. in and get injured again yeah. <laughs> and then usually sort of crawl into the fight week <laughs> do you know what I mean <laughs> that's sort of how it usually goes yeah I love like, it I love yeah. it so what was it like training him for this fight for, with on three weeks notice it was, was good it, weird? Like, it was it was good for me because I didn't have to do any of the other work I normally do I was kind of yes. Not that I didn't want to be doing that other work yes. and I was glad the gym was shut, but yeah. I got that. When I was fighting, I always had the burden of running my own gym, doing stuff. Yeah. When now as a coach, this was the first time where he didn't have to run his gym. Yeah. I didn't have to run mine. I could just focus on getting them good rounds and getting them good training and bringing in a partner for him to work with. Yeah. Was that quite hard getting them partners in or was it? No, because fighters you'd, love to you'd, fight, you'd, right? You need to train with anybody. Do you yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. Like we brought in guys who were bigger, but you just drilled with them. Yeah. Uh, there was obviously Mitch came in, did some sparring. Yeah, you got one sparring session in for the whole yeah. fight. Really, you got cut yeah. in that session? No but way, did you? And then the cut, I was bothered about, and then I realised how bad my thumb was. Yeah, and it was like so. Every time, any time I did anything, I had to wear big boxing gloves just to make sure that my thumb yeah. it was all taped up and locked up because I couldn't like move it, so I couldn't yeah. roll, I couldn't like wrestle. Uh, I was sort of doing pads and like. We were doing like bits of bits of technique work and conditioning and stuff like yeah. that. But I knew I haven't been there before. I just need to make sure that I'm not totally unfit. Yeah. But I had a lot of weight to lose as well. I think. I, oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Because I mean, oh, I mean, I think everyone put weight on on lockdown, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. So I was just like everyone else. I was just thinking, ah, oh, wait, I'm just going to enjoy this time. I'm just going to yeah. eat and drink what I want. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I managed to get a fight. I was yeah. like, all oh, right. What, what was it like the arena? Like with nobody in? Because obviously you. No, it is <laughs> right. So uh, I don't know. You sort of because you, you you fucking focused on having. A fight, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I'm in fight mode, and like every time I've ever walked out to people, it's been people there yeah. ready, ready for yeah. a fight. So I remember walking out, and I was like, "Hold me on, boss." You know, you're again. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like there's no one there. Who are you waving at? Yeah. Did it feel any different or not? A, a little bit, a yeah. little bit. But once once we get into it, it's just like it's just me and him anyway. We talk about this all the time. You know, the worst part is hearing each other breathe. Oh, like yeah. We're like, can you put some fucking music on? Because it's weird as fuck training someone. <laughs> all you can hear is you, they're going, <laughs> 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 all the fucking time. But obviously, when you're in a cage, really you don't really are. hear that normally, do you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, it was like, I didn't I didn't notice it as much, just sort of like, just sort of on the walkout a little bit. Yeah. And then when you get in there, you sort of focus, it's sort of a bit more tunnel vision anyway. Yeah. yeah. So it didn't affect us anyway. And, and I'd, I'd fought for, or like on the Ultimate Fighter and things like that and that's before. The same. It was the same sort of thing. Yeah. So I, did, I knew it wasn't going to really bother yeah. us. Yeah, I love it. I'm gonna ask you this first. Yeah. What got you into fighting? Um, I, do you know what it is, right? I did. I started doing it for fitness with my dad when I was young. Really? Yeah. Just like me, my dad went to a kickboxing gym, and I was like, "Oh, I'll come just to do a little bit of fitness." And then there was people like rolling about on the floor and that, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, just, yeah." Yeah. So I just had to go a bit. I just ended up being really good at it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But then, so then I trained, and I got beat when I was about fifteen. I think I had my first fight in like two thousand and two. Did you? Shit. Yeah, and it was there, uh, and then and then sort of for years after, I was thinking I was at fourteen or fifteen. I did a few grappling tournaments and, and my first fight, and uh, and then sort of just went back to to and from the gym maybe a couple of times over the next few years, sort yeah. of thing. And then uh, well, it was weird. What, what, my mates all really started getting into the UFC. I'd already known what it was for years. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I can do this and that. Dude. And they all just laughed at us. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> like, I'm not exactly yeah. the type of guy who comes across like a fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And everyone was like, oh, you can't do that. I was like, well, I can. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do some training again. Yeah. Again, then we'll all go out and I'll have a fight and then it'll be a good night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? And then uh, we'll all go out afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's what yeah. goes back into it. And then I just sort of kept on doing it from there. Really? And then, aye. It's yeah. crazy, See. like. Would you know what else to do if you weren't fighting apart from... Coaching? I mean, yeah, I mean, I love coaching. Yeah. I love coaching, but obviously, to get that, to, to got, sort of get that background, I've, I'd have had to put all these years in anyway. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I was a scaffolder before. I give up. I give up. I give up like uh, working to just concentrate on my career full time. And I was just sort oh, of. So you were fighting and, and scaffolding at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And then uh, and then I got the chance to go and train down the Wolves there. Yeah. I was going down with Kurt. Yeah. So my last just sort of she was just the main breadwinner in the house. Do you know what I mean? And she then I really? managed to get sponsored as well. Yeah. So then once I got sponsored, I got sponsored off her dad, actually. Jeff Dobson, Mark Eyre. So yeah. then after that, I could sort of do everything. I could I could train yeah. full, time full time and then still feed the kids. Yeah. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? And so, then when did the coaching for you start? Um, Sort of. We, we, started a, we started a gym years ago, me and Kurt, actually. Mm -hmm. And then it just sort of fizzled out. We didn't really have it, have it right. What we were trying to do is we, we thought everyone was going to be like us and we were trying to make like really tough fighters and back there in the day it was it was a little bit different it was sort of like really old school the way we used to train yeah. and the way we used to bring people on to train and, yeah. and it, was, it was wrong and like people 
some people are just not like that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Some people just aren't built like that. Yeah. Um. So so that stopped, and then I ended up just starting up my own thing in my dad's gym. My dad's got like a weightlifting gym, Grant's gym. Yeah. So I just started off my own thing, and then started coaching people a little bit differently about the SBG way. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Where look, you you don't, it's not about how tough you are; it's about getting good. <laughs> yeah. Doing techniques and stuff. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's sort of the best way to yeah. come on. I love it. And then just start, yeah, just sort of snowball from there. Nice. I love it. Alex, what about you? How did you get sorry, no one here as good as this. <laughs> 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 um, I was working at a bar in Shields, and at the time, the only people who were really training and me, I didn't even know what it was, was Dorman. Yeah. And there was a Dorman who he ran his own gym, and I don't know if it was like part of Black to get people in this class, but yeah. he kept telling us I should go and I should yeah. go. And he'd like, I think it was to try and impress maybe the girls who worked behind the bar, he'd like try and fill in the glass collectors and stuff. And every time he'd give you a dead arm, the floor and do a roll <laughs> and get away from me. Yeah. Like, you should come, you'll be good at it. Yeah. And I got clipped playing football. I went to work with a black guy, yeah. and uh, he was like, no, you need to come to my class. And I think I'd just started uni at the time, I was at uni at Sunderland, yeah. and I, so I just took some shorts and t-shirt in my backpack, and I yeah. sat all day in the library, like, legs shaking, thinking, oh, I'm going to go, I'll just get on the bus to arrive. Went, finished uni early, stood outside for about an hour, yeah. went in. How long, how, what was, year was that, would you say? I was 19, so 14 years ago. Fucking hell. I was 18, 19. What was, an MMA would have been... Different then, was it? Yeah, the, the gym was like a Japanese jiu-jitsu slash MMA. Peter McQueen was doing shows at the time, so yeah. it was trying to transition in MMA. It was a lot of Brazilian jiu-jitsu technique, yeah. uh, but taught by like a traditional jiu-jitsu black belt. Yes. Then yeah. if you did the belts, it would be a, a traditional approach, yes. so that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Stu yeah. Bailey ran the Thai boxing at the Oh, gym really? At the time, yeah. Is that how long you've known Stu for? Yeah. Oh, wow. So I trained there, um, got really good quick. I remember the first time I ever submitted somebody was like, the second session I went to in live rolling. And it wasn't like any technique. I would I would go mental if someone did this in my gym. But it was like a guillotine, but backwards when I was on his back. And you remember Dan <laughs> Severin when he fought in WWE? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, did yeah. the dragon sleep, man. It was yeah, like yeah. just snapping <laughs> yeah. the guy's neck. I remember tapping yeah. somebody with that and thinking really? that was me. Yeah. Yeah. And then thinking about now, I was thinking, what an idiot. <laughs> like if someone did that in my gym, I'd be flipping my shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like just trying to snap this kid's neck. But yeah. uh, I think it was a little bit like... I grew up watching Saved by the Bell. Like, <laughs> AC Slater would wrestle, and I'd always be like, I wish we had wrestling in school. Yeah. yeah, it just looks mint. Yeah. And I I was, like, average in other sports, but I thought that would be my sport. And I yeah. watched pro wrestling, so I kind of just took to it from there straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how, how long after that was you started fighting? I fought about five, six months after. I didn't have really? a clue. I didn't have a clue straight what I was in. doing. I just knew how to sub people. I was the smallest person in the gym. I submitted most of the big guys. Yeah. Um... And I just remember, I knew how to leg kick. So I know if I kick him really hard, he'll take us down, I'll sub him. That's exactly what happened. Really? In like 30 seconds. Was so, like, it was almost, so it was almost your your main discipline. Because I would say your main discipline's jiu-jitsu, right? That's your... I feel like it is. I would say my main discipline's MMA. Yeah. In yes. the sense that... Yeah, but I, if you had to pick a piece of MMA, would it... Um, I wouldn't say so. Would you not? Nah, nah, I wouldn't say so. Because yeah. I, th I think myself and the, the guys I coach, their ability to fight across all ranges. Yes. But then that, to me, that is jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Jiu-jitsu is, is fighting, not grappling. The sport mm. of jiu-jitsu is just grappling. Yeah. But real jiu-jitsu doesn't, like, have an understanding of starting on the feet, starting a distance from each other. Yes. Now, they might not, in the traditional way, do it better than anyone else. They just did it better than everyone else at that time. Yes. But kind of as that's evolved, like my, I don't know. It would be hard to say my style is jiu jitsu. Yeah. Where if if someone was looking back at your fighting career, jiu jitsu. That's yeah, the word. In fact, just re jokes. Let's say jokes. I, 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 yeah, yeah, I yeah. spent my whole career trying to like show that I wasn't just a grappler. Yes, yeah. and I think yeah. that like if you watch the why I'd never went out to look to submit someone. I just went out to dominate them in the most efficient way possible. Yes. Most of that is using good jiu jitsu technique, but yeah. and my takedowns on jiu jitsu. And for every submission I had, I had to take the guy down. Is yeah. that not yeah, wrestling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and my yeah, takedowns, yeah. I never, I think 90 odd percent finish rate of takedowns. How was I able to take everybody down? Because I set it up with strike and you know, I timed it under their strikes. Yeah. So is that, it's all yeah, I yeah, 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 it makes sense. sense. Oh, yeah. you could go really cheesy. You just say it's like, people with, it's yeah. Jeet Kune Do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, I don't think of myself as having a style and I don't try to teach a style now. Mm, like yeah. I, in my Jiu Jitsu classes, I teach, what I believe jiu-jitsu is, which is for fighting. Yeah. I don't teach, like, uh, 
this is jujitsu class. Let's all move this way. This yeah. is striking class. Let's all move this way. Yeah. I'm teaching the most efficient way of fighting in a, a yeah. freestyle manner. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. definitely. Yeah. So I, I don't like being called just a grappler. Yeah. I remember I'd, I don't think I'd even threw a punch or a kick it properly in a fight until yeah. I fought for the Cage Warriors world title. Really? I think I just took everyone down and then they give us the back <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is really easy. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't even been hit. And the next thing I know, I'm fighting this Iron Man who's now fighting in the UFC. He's a good wrestler. I was thinking, people are going to think I've shit myself as soon as I can't take it down. He <laughs> stuffed my first take down. I was like, oh, well, this isn't so bad. Going to have to see what this is all about now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and is that the hardest fight you've ever had? Uh, yeah. yeah. Your favorite yeah. fight? Pro it's the one I enjoyed the most because I kind of took the pressure off myself. Yeah. There's been windows before that where I nearly stopped. Yeah. And <laughs> when I got to that point, that's way beyond what I thought I'd ever achieve. Yeah. And way beyond what anyone around me thought I would yes. achieve. So like, I was like, I don't even care what happens. Yeah. yeah. And I had yeah. no, I think a lot of people worry about getting filled in front of their friends. I had no problem with that. Like yeah. if you met me when I was a teenager, you'd expect us to get filled in front of my friends. <laughs> Do you know, like, yeah. So it wasn't a problem. I just, so I enjoyed that the most. I felt like the pressure was off. And after that fight, I went and put a load of pressure on myself again. That I, I must win. I must win. I must get the UFC. Yeah. Where with that one, I just kind of, He's yeah, it is. yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, what's your um? I mean, we just talked about your last fight before. What's your kind of favorite, most memorable fight apart from that last one? Um, I mean, the, the it's it's hard, hard to say because like uh, the one in London when I fought Marla Vera, that was like my first fight. Um, sort of um, under my UFC contract. If you didn't yeah. class the yeah. the finale, yeah, Do you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and that was that was pretty memorable because. It was just such a big thing. It was like I got into the UFC and I had such a such a long road after that to get there. Do you know what I mean? I think I was out for, out of injuries for about two and a half years. Really? Yeah. And then the fight came up and it was in London, in me. So it's like the capital of our country. Do you know yeah. what I mean? On the big, on the biggest stage in the world and like on, on a massive card. I think Bisping. Who was Bisping headline on that one? Was it Anderson Silver? I think. I think Bisping was fighting Anderson Silver on yeah. that one. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And that was just like a massive thing. And then I go, went and got the win as well. Yeah. And um, and that was, yeah, that just sort of, uh, it was like, the, that was the pinnacle of my career up, to, up until this point sort of thing. Yeah. What's the hardest mean? part of fighting? Well, it's, I mean, it's got to be the dieting. Is it? Yeah. It's it, it's it's the, I wouldn't say the hardest part. I, it's yeah. not as if I find it hard. Yeah. But it's just like sort of the most tedious. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? What's your take on that? The dieting was never a problem. Like now I can't diet. Yeah. Like you, if I had a fight and I had to make weight. I was always, no matter what weight I fought at, I was we massive for the were, uh, Like, uh, I fought at Bantamweight, missed it. <laughs> so I tried to fight the same weight as him, right? Yeah. Um, you tried to fight the same weight as him? Yeah. 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 Did you? I missed weight by like half a pound. Yeah, did you? Shit. I was dead. I, 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 honestly well. believe, no, I honestly believe I would have made it. I was going to make weight or die. Yeah. And uh, there was a guy called Brad Wheeler. Right. And he uh, came in the sauna and someone passed him a bottle, like a water bottle it looked yeah. like. And he went to, when I put it on the sauna and it had baby oil in it. He was meant to put it on his skin oh, and he set the sauna on fire. And oh, there's shit. me. And so I just was like, look, dick, I'm stay like, in. I'll lose 20%. <laughs> but I tried to get out of treadmill, cramped up. Really? Oh, I was a mess. I was an absolute mess. I think I cut like 20 something pounds in water alone. Stu so Bailey was with us then. He was like, are you sure you want to be doing this? We're hitting pads. Like, I hadn't had a drink in two days. Shit. I, I just didn't want to. Uh, didn't want to make, I like, I wanted to make Bantamweight. Yeah. I'd had people in my head, I think. We were, I went to the Ultimate Fighter tryouts and they were like, you're too small for a featherweight. Yeah. Do you know, like, and, and I don't know what, if I listened to them or I was just like, yeah, but I've been really long as a Bantamweight. Yeah. And it was a bad idea. Then next thing you know, I'm having to have those weight cuts to fight a featherweight. Yeah. And the diet was never a problem because I was like, right, I need to be this so I can make weight. Yeah. So diet was easy. Yeah. Cutting weight is absolutely uh, yeah. horrendous. Like Max <laughs> did what? How much did you have to cut when you had that amateur fight? Mm, like a few pound. Mm. How miserable was it? Quite, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that might be the worst. Was that where I had to do the weigh-in on, on, no, on, the, on the phone? For cage, oh, you had about cage warriors? Yeah. Yeah, a few pound. Right. Yeah. And was so, that hard? I think I could have went more, but it, it, it I wasn't nice. Don't, don't tell him that. <laughs> I thought that, that is the <laughs> hey, that I changed my answer. Yes, we couldn't. <laughs> we couldn't. By the way, it was definitely the worst part of fight. Yeah, for yeah, that. fucking hell. I had a. F I, I think that was a bad cut, but the I had a probably a smaller cut, but like it felt way more brutal. Where I, I hospitalized myself after the fight. I fought a guy called Rafael Diaz in Bournemouth. We got to the hotel. The bath was terrible. It was about 
this deep, yeah. didn't run hot water. I was in the worst oh, hotel shit. in the world. I'm already dehydrated at this point. Yeah. So I, anyway, look, I'm booking, find another hotel, yeah. walk there, pick up some Epsom salts from an Amazon pickup shop. I've got, really? I've got 10 kilograms of Epsom salts, <laughs> walking through Bournemouth. Yeah. Uh, it was, Adam was with us. He was yeah. the only person with us. Ryan Roddy was coming down the corner. us like on the day of the fight. Yeah. So I've got like, I think he was 18 at the time, and then maybe 19 at the time. Yeah. He'd cut weight himself. I think he'd had one pro fight himself, but didn't like... If Davey had a big cut, I'd be looking after him. So I was looking after myself. Yes. And then next thing yeah. you know, I get to this hotel. It's got a little, it's got a gym. I'm 15 pound over. Fuck it. So I do hell. five pound of, so more than what you did. I do <laughs> in a sweatsuit on a treadmill doing 10 minute intervals of jogging, five minute intervals of pummeling, oh, 10 minutes hell. jogging, five minutes pads. I do an hour and a half. The five pound comes off. I go to bed, 10 pound lighter. Don't sleep. At all. Yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? Can't sleep at all. Dry mouth, headache. You can't thing. sleep the night before the fight? Nah. nah. Well, the, the night, night before, before the weigh-in. Right. Just the I've, I've had to, I've dehydrated myself that much. Sometimes I've had it where I've cut a lot of weight yeah. the night before yeah. and then slept like a baby. Yeah. But this one, I think I was stressing, thinking, I'm not going to make weight. Yeah. Yeah. There's sleep, been so right. many problems doing this with a hotel. Promotions are joke. It wasn't, it was just the only hotels they could get. I, yeah. I think I paid like half my purse to get a hotel. Really? So I can't <laughs> wait. I've done that before. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> So anyway, then ten pound to do in the morning, and like the stupid stuff you do, couldn't we? So I'm convinced the tiles in the bathroom are wonky. So I'm putting the scales. I yeah, cut, I'm, I'm about two on the table over, top. Put it on, on the bedside table. Uh, right? yeah. I climb on the bedside table, <laughs> sort of looking like a skeleton. Right? Adam is looking at us like, "What are you doing?" I'm still completely naked on this bedside table, yeah. <laughs> trying to balance so I don't yeah. fall off. I step off and like my knee goes, and I'm like, oh, oh, and I'm like, run the bath, I need to have another one. It sounds oh. more stressful than the fucking fight. It's sh- yeah, it is. Is it worse than the fight? Yeah. yeah. Is it? It's way it's worse. Shit. I'd rather have my head punched and then get, I like, I won't cut weight ever again. Really? I w- so if you had another fight, you'd go in, what, what weight do you think you're going after at? That, after that fight, I fought my next two fights at lightweight. I yeah. always knew that if I was to fight in the UFC, it would be worth it to, to cut the featherweight. Yes. But the problem is those two fights at lightweight, I was massive for them and I had to yeah. cut the same amount of weight. Oh, All that happened is I just, because I was traveling down to Manchester more, yeah. I, I ate more. Yeah. And I just got bigger and bigger you and sat bigger. A lot of ta- you would sp- sat a lot of time on the train. Were you on the train? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sitting oh. on the train a lot of the time so you wouldn't you have been as active. So, but I, just cutting weight's the worst thing you can would, ever yeah. do in your life. Would you ever let any of your fighters now do what you've done? They have to. If that, yeah. yeah it's like it's like Adam, has, like Adam has big weight cuts. It's, has he done 20? Or? Nah. No. Maybe the week of the fight. Yeah, I've done like twenty was demand where the fifteen pound one felt worse because I, I then went and fought two rounds the next day. I end up with a water infection from dehydrating myself that much, yeah. and I'm, I would end up hospitalized with like a septic arthritis in my hip after oh, all because oh, of that. I, remember. I was on crutches for weeks. Like I messed myself up so mm, bad. Yeah. I imagine some of my health problems now are from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not really. It's not good. Yeah, like, right. is it? I wouldn't let anyone do the amount I do for my weight class. Yeah. So like, Adam doing ten in water is not the same as me doing ten in water. Yeah. it's a yeah. percentage of your body weight. Yeah, you know, like yeah, me doing twenty and fighting a bantam weight. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you literally. But probably, you, you've done twenty. Yeah, pounds. yeah. I, mean, I think I probably did about twenty this this like the last one or just over the week. Really? Yeah. Shit. But well, like then, then by the time but, when you were out there, was, were you out there for a week? Yeah, yeah. Wait, oh, yeah, we were sort. Of, we had to go to London, quarantine in London, get yeah. tested, flew to Abu Dhabi, quarantine Abu Dhabi. Yeah. So we were in the hotel for four days. Oh, so I was just having a train, thinking I'm going to get these fucking calories off me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm skipping in the hotel room. Yeah. Uh, to the point where I got me calves rock solid. Was it? Yeah, because it was like one of the only things I could do. Yeah. So then I thought, you know what? Oh, it's you're not, not allowed out the room. No, no, nothing. Hell, no that's one allowed. Like we had to you order rooms. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> in your own, oh, in your own room. In your own room. Oh really? I would yeah. have spent. I'm glad I didn't go. So you wouldn't have been allowed in the room with him. No, I would yeah. have spent two days in a room on my own. I would. Yeah. I wouldn't went. I'd be the same. I wouldn't went. I'd be the same. Yeah, it was like trying to plan the day on walls. And the time oh, difference, God. so you couldn't, what's the time difference, eh? It's, oh, it's not too bad. It's only it's like, like, it's like three hours, hours, front, three oh, hours in front. Oh, well, that's not that yeah. bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. It was, but, but, but that, was in, that was in England when we got to Abu Dhabi. 
we were supposed to be in separate rooms, but we all jumped in the same one and we just like, look, we're staying in this one. We've all been on the plane together. Yes. So if any of us got it, we've got it anyway. We're just right going to stay that. in this room. Yeah. Yeah. They, they were eventually, yeah. we just sort of just sort of like camped in the room. Nope, that's, <laughs> that's it. it. <laughs> yeah, it was more the guys at the hotel rather than the UFC because yeah. the UFC was saying, look, just let them be, it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. But the guys in the hotel were like, they had these certain protocols that they wanted yeah. everyone to follow. Mm. And then we, they, we were, they were pretty cool with it in the end. They just yeah. said, right, okay, so you stay, you'll give us a pop-up bed, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we had one lad on the couch, one lad on a pop-up bed and then I had the double bed, you know what I mean? Come on, you're the, <laughs> you're the talent. Yeah, you're the talent, I wouldn't expect anything uh, else. So another question for you, and this is something that we spoke a lot of guys about, like after you've had a fight, is there any, and I know there is for you, Alex, but for you, do you get any? I mean, yes, I, I, did, I, really, I did this time. I think I think of a lot of it was to do with the jaw. Aye. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah. it's like anything, isn't it? It's like you, you live your life on this like sort of like this steady like, yeah. Sort of like, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, that's just like, so if that's just you, and then if you go up, yeah. you've got to come down, it's like yeah. anything, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I think when you, obviously when you've had the fight, it's like that, and then you have to come down before you can just level out again, Yeah. you know what I yeah. mean? But what do you do to help, are you doing anything in particular to manage that, are you? You know what it is, it's just sort of. Trying to get back to training as soon as you can, or? Yeah, I mean, ideally, because I, I hate it when I don't train, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm just used to, Training, I just saw my body just used to it now where yeah. I start getting a bit like antsy and a bit like, yes. um, I just need it in my life sort of thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. at the minute I thought, because I know I've got to rest as well. And uh, and, it, and it's weird because you sort of get in this like little little hole where you, your motivation sort of goes, but you, so, so you can't train, but you'd probably feel better if you did. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. then, but then I just sort of, but I have, a, I, have, I have like a week where I just sort of eat crap. Yeah. You know what I mean? That makes you feel worse anyway, but yeah. you think, ah, it's worth it. I've just had a fight, you know what I mean? Yeah. I've, yeah. Just, I've cut just cut weight all that fucking weight. Yeah. yeah, this time it was a bit chippy because I couldn't hardly eat out. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know oh, what I mean? Shit, yeah, so like, I, so I like to use my soup release. That, was. Soup, I was getting mashed potato. Mashed potato and putting like just like balsamic vinegar on it and oh stuff like that. You may as well be cutting weight again. You may as well be cutting weight again. balsamic vinegar on my every. No, yeah. balsamic oh. vinegar on, on mashed potato, potato mash. It's a game changer. It's, it's not. Honest, it's not. Honest, like, God, it's it not. is. It's a fish and You have to try it. You know what, David? We've just had a guy come on and he's got this thing called 50 best life hacks. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure what balsamic on sweet potato will make the. Mate, honestly, God, you need to put that one on it. Yeah, try it next time. That goes on. Do they even have I do. I know it's minging. It's just minging. No, I think honestly, God, it's lovely. Same on avocado as well. I love it. When we were in Germany, you would make meat because you, when you were cutting weight, you were like, you're gonna have to eat. I the like bread. people to eat. I was the same over there. I, I like people to eat stuff when I can't eat. Oh, so you can't get it? Just yeah, just let me know what it's yeah. like. You know what mean? I'll get a smell of it. <laughs> I'm not meant to have that much bread anyway. My Crohn's was killing oh, for the week because everything yeah, just, went for a meal. The fight, 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 fight week, but food's like porn to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like oh, oh, look, look at that there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you make someone else eat. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> feeding us loaves of bread. Really. And ask what's, what's, it, what's the texture like? What's yeah, the that's like? what I want to know. How's the bread? Is it warm? Is it warm or is it cold? That's it's like dip it in there, a little bit of oil and then a little bit of vinegar. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's a good one. Wow. I fucking love it. That is a good one, actually. I'll give you the vinegar yeah. and the oil. Uh, yeah, that's good. That, no, vinegar and the oil. Now for good for food. But I'm not having it on avocado. Like. Mashed oh, potatoes no. worse. Is it? It's not, you know... Honestly, so is that all you could eat? Soup and mashed potato? Yeah, uh, but to be fair, that's Scruffy. all I was like allowed to eat. I was having, yeah, I was having like soup and, and mashed potato for a couple of days. Are you now, though? I'm, I, sh- I'm, I shouldn't be in the hospital with telling me I, don't, I shouldn't be eating for about six weeks. Uh, yeah. But I've just sort of been eating loads of different things now. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I'm sort of like, yeah, it doesn't hurt as much. It's more just getting it in. Yeah. You know, because I, ca- I can only open my jaw a little bit. Yeah. But I can chew up and down, but I can't like move it around <laughs> side to side. <laughs> So, so chew up and down a couple of times yeah, and swallow it like that. Yeah, and it's Holy like, it, but it's painful. It's, uh, no, and what? sometimes I get sick of the pain before I get sick of the food. Yes. What was it in the end? Because it was more than just a fractured jaw. Wasn't oh it? yeah, it was a fractured. There was t- it was fractured jaw in both places. Uh, oh. A fractured nose and then deviated septum instead on the on the MRI scan. But they only operated on one bit of it. Did they not touch your nose? No, no, didn't nah. bother with it. Nah. I broke my nose and I'm like, are you going to keep boxing? I says, I said, well, there's no point in fixing it. Yeah. Oh, it just gets right. softer. I took my mum and everything because I thought we were going to fucking straighten it. Right. You know, the, I, th- I took my mum. I was 36, <laughs> oh, yeah. year, 36 years old, my mum at the hospital. Because oh, yeah. I thought we were going to do that thing, <laughs> aye. So they were like, oh, we can't do anything. I was like, I brought my mum. My mum took the day off work, man. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what about you? What's that? Did you suffer from that whole come down after a fight thing or? Yeah, terribly. Did like, it? Some bigger than others, like the, the Naramani fight, the world title. I was like, all oh, right, this is. Oh. I'm world champ. Oh. Is this When's it? When's the next fight? Is this When's the next fight? Is that what you like? When's the next fight? It's like, it's like being a drug addict. You're just yeah. chasing the next high. Yes. And when those highs on, 
high enough, you yeah. need something more extreme. Yes. Like, so for yeah. what, what you've had, what advice would you give to fighters to, to not focus on that end result so much or? Nah, just handle it. It's part of, I think it's part yeah. of hustle. Those high, you can't have something as extreme as fighting without having that low. It's yeah. impossible. There's yeah. always going to be the ups it's and downs. It's literally impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how can you, like how high. can you be up for something so much yeah. and not have the fall when it's over? We talked to Tyson Fury about this, and he's like, he's fighting at that fucking oh, yeah, the yeah. biggest fights in like. If you look back at it, it'll be one, the fights with Wilder will be some of the biggest fights oh, in history. Definitely, like looking back, and he said his thing is just the first time he had a nightmare with it, but he said he just gets straight he, as soon as he gets back, he gets back to training. Mm. Yeah, which shocked me because before he said he used to balloon up fucking five stone in weights. Yeah, he's cutting five, five stones stone. for fights, I. I now as a coach, I get it on a weekly basis, so and it's worse. Yeah. Is it? So like some with some guys, I'll be like, like I had a massive high after Davy fought the weekend. And I was thinking like, all oh, right, and I was just thinking about the bantamweight division, thinking about who we could be fighting next because that's my way of getting <laughs> yeah. over. It. Now, yeah. and like if some of the pro guys fight, I'm like, right, looking through the rank and see who can get next. Yeah. And I'll, I'll also see how what that's done for like their reputation and stuff. Yeah. And see what people in. are saying online. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I like that type of thing because that yeah. kind of. It, it drags the fight on and it gives it like a little bit of an after effect yeah, which yeah, like yeah, slows yeah. down the so fight over of let's move on the side of a cliff it's just coming down slowly uh, yeah. like walking down slowly but I used to like I used to be warming up for a fight and thinking because I knew I was going to get that low I'd be thinking about who I want to fight next just before I bought really? a fight <laughs> not because I'm looking past them but because I know about that that crash yeah, is going to happen. Like, I'll be like, so I'll go and win this and then I'll train for that fight with him yeah, yeah. so yeah, you're yeah, making yeah, plans yeah. in your head just to ch- kind of yeah, prevent myself from getting that drop yeah. um but obviously it's been severe at times yeah. and th- there was the obviously the Aaron Ronnie fight what happened after that was Cage Royce disappeared yeah for nine months yeah. and I'm sitting there as Cage Royce champion thing I'm either going to defend the belt or go to the UFC yeah and nothing yeah. and next thing you know I'm on holiday with Melissa with Madeira seeing our family the only fight I get was against a guy called Phil Rabin who's a tough kickboxer had a bit of a mixed record but it's like hard as nails yeah. in his hometown in a sports hall the size of this room, yeah. right? And next thing you know, I'm halfway through the first round of that fight. Warriors. No, on like yeah. a local kickboxing promotion, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's women shaking the cage, yeah. swilled up a pint of beer. I'm in the middle Punch of the fight. Punch his fucking head in. Punch his fucking head. Punch I, him there. I went from the Metro Radio Arena to this, and I'm just, the, yeah. it was the, a, the year was a crash. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. it just dragged on and yeah. dragged on, like not being able to get fights. So. Yeah. After that, I managed it a little bit better. I yeah. had the, I always had a big pick me up after a fight. So yeah. after the the Brazilian fight, I like I knew finished a guy who'd fought in the WEC. Yeah. He's from a big big gym. He's from uh, Black Zillions. Yeah, and I knew something good would come. And then uh, I got a a message from my manager. The UFC were going to fly me and one of my training partners out to do the signing for Cage Royce at the Fan Expo. Yeah. And I spoke to Sean Shelby there, who's the matchmaker. I kind of got the vibe. I was going to get signed soon. I was yeah. 13 and two were like 12 finishes. Yeah. And I knew it was almost inevitable. Yeah. Uh, but that the flights for the Fan Expo were like a week after a fight as well. Yeah. So like I didn't have that drop after that fight because yeah. all that fight was like, now I'm going to go to Vegas. Yeah, 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 I'm going to yeah, get my name yeah. out there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I, I always, tr- I don't know if I did it myself subconsciously, yeah. I kind of. Do you know what? Put I things almost, in place. I'm like, I'm almost like, do you know what? I don't even know if there's anything wrong with that because I think it's important to have something to look forward to. Yeah. And that's all you're creating in your mind is something to look forward to. Like, I think this is a problem for a yeah. lot of men these days that don't have much to look forward to. So that's why they're going out and getting fucking wrecked every weekend. Yeah, that's a good point. Because the only thing they've got definitely. to look forward to. Is I like to have that focus in my life. Yeah. Like, that's what I love about like, getting ready for fights and things like that. I love yeah. the fact because, like, everything I do goes so like clean and, and perfect yeah. and I really structure my life toward that big one goal. Yeah. And then if it's not you, for both of you, it's it's one of your fighters. Yeah, right? yeah. Ah, so that's something it. to look forward to, now I'm looking forward to their fight. So I suppose yeah. it's just a case of of managing that and then, I, I, again, I don't even know if there's a problem with it unless yeah. unless it becomes too much of a fucking, almost an, an addiction. I want the next rush. Yeah. 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 I think it's easier as a coach because I have now multiple outlets to get the high. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like I'm not yeah. just coaching one guy. Yeah. Like my aim um, isn't to just run a big gym. Yeah. It's to have multiple UFC champions and multiple weight classes. That's yeah. my goal. I'm only running, not only running normal classes for that, but the gym runs itself to provide me an outlet to coach elite level guys. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Yeah. So I have that. I'm almost constantly chasing bigger dreams of that. Yeah. And the dreams are bigger than when it was just my own. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I'm almost trying to help 
other people with ears is so much. Kind of yeah. a bit like what you do now, a little yeah. bit working with so many other people yeah. gives you an outlet yeah, does to, yeah. to yeah. drive. To, imagine you were just doing everything and it was almost like fighting selfish. It's yeah. the most selfish thing you can do. Imagine all your ambition is selfish ambition. Then you get a bigger drop. But when it's kind of, I have, I'd have a little bit of ambition, like I'm working with this guy and a bit yeah. of ambition, yeah. There's yeah. no major drop where yes. I'm falling on my own. Yeah. Mm. So even if they lose and you're pissed off, you're kind of, you're on to the next. There's, an, there's another fight. There's it's another fight. It's like and we'll camaraderie, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And we'll, we'll fix the reason they lost. We'll work around that. Or it's a sport, right? This is the thing about fighting that nobody gets that you lose, like in football, you lose one Regularly. day. If you, Regularly. You play the next week. Yeah. Uh, I think the Liverpool. Well, how many points did they get, Davies? Uh, I don't know, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they might have got 100 don't, don't points. Like won, like won 30, yeah, I seen they won 93. 32 games. Yeah. I imagine they lost three or four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And Liverpool, Liverpool. The yeah, title. exactly. Liverpool won the title with the biggest margin ever <laughs> in the history of the Premier League, yeah. I think. Yeah. Right, like I think. <laughs> don't quote, <laughs> don't quote us on that. It'll be but there, like. they still lost games. Yeah. You don't get that in fighting. Do you know like That's a bit of the problem. So picking someone up after a fight and dusting them off a lot harder because it's, it could be six months before the fight again. Yes. But they also have to start. Fight again. They have to also yeah. accept that losing's a 50-50 chance when you step in the fight with someone as good as you yeah. that you're going to lose. Dude, 50 we 50 chance. We were talking about this before. I think that one of the exciting things about MMA, but also one of the things for the fighters is you could lose to somebody that's not as good as you. Oh, yeah. With one fucking punch. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Or one like you could make one tiny mission. mistake, yeah, get that's fucking it. slept. So easy, so yeah. easy to, to lose a fight in MMA. Look, yeah. It's not like, like, like if you if, if you compare it to boxing, where boxing, the, the better boxer nearly always wins. Yeah. But in, uh, in MMA, that's not the case because, like, Cause something it, might happen. Or a little mistake, so small. Yeah. Or, like, even if that, that one who, so, who should win in a boxing fight. Yeah. He gets clipped. He's got right. All done. Eight count. Yeah. Sort yourself out. Right back in. Yeah. No. But you do that in MMA. One little move. And then oh, then the run stop here. Eight count. Oh, oh, then unless, you want a sub. Yeah. It's unless Herb Dean's ref, and then you get about a good, <laughs> a good twenty seconds to recover while the guy unloads a few more shots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mad. So, do you find Alex coaching harder than fighting or easier? Uh, I feel like oh, I found I was when when someone fights. I feel way more anxiety for them than I ever felt for myself. It's, yeah. it's my body. Yeah, you're in control. You're in more control. Mm. And I, I, I don't care what happens to me. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, I ate a bowl of bread and I have Crohn's disease. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> right? like yeah. I'm a little bit more. Uh, what if with my own body? Yeah. Mm. It's hard for me to be like that with someone else. They have to really want it. Yeah. But I also feel as a coach, and I don't want to say I feel like I have a big influence on people, and I'm very authoritative in so many ways that I think people would not approach me and say they didn't want to do something. I think some people would be a bit intimidated to do that. Like yeah. David would never say, Alex, I don't really want to uh, have a fight. Uh, yeah. I don't, I really. yeah. But I think some yeah. people might not tell me and that might be me encouraging them to get in there mm. that really they should say, look, I don't want yes, to do it. Yes, 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 yes. So yes, I feel yes. that sometimes. So they might start training for fun, get good. Yeah. And then you're like, let's get your fucking fight. I like I've never I try never to ask anybody now. Yeah, you know, I'll ask people. I'll, I'll, I'll ask people. Like me as well. yeah. Yeah. I'll ask people in advance, like if they want to fight yeah. long term. But I wouldn't say do yeah. you want to fight in six weeks. Like, what's the goal yeah. when you first come? Yeah, do you know what unless I mean? they've told me, like, look, I'm, I really want to. I really want to do this. But at the same time, like some of the kids I coach, I'm not going to say they are doing this, but some might be doing it to try and impress me or impress others. Yeah, and that's horrific. Yeah, you should not fight for those reasons. Yeah. and I do. So I get nervous that when they get in there, they may be getting in there because of the they want to be part of the gym, they want to fit in as part of the yeah, fight team, yeah. or, or a wrong reason, not yeah. a wrong reason if it, it means a lot to them, yeah. but for a wrong reason. And, yeah. and I can never know 100% someone's motivation. I knew my motivation and that I was totally cool with the consequences. Yeah. Yeah. Where we, I could put you in for a fight and I don't even know if you're down with the consequences of this. Yeah. Do you know, like, I'd, yeah, yeah, I'll never yeah. know 100% whether you're just telling me you are. Yeah, yeah that's it. Or you are. Do you and you'll be okay with a loss. Yeah. yeah. I feel I feel <laughs> as if, like, guys, um, even, and, and I tell this to people as well, not just, like, what they want for, out of it, but I, I, I recommend to anyone in the world, look, do it, because it's the, one of them, life's about experiences, and that is one of the craziest experiences you've ever done, isn't it? You know, no it's hard. like... That's how I was able to give up so a fucking really bad coke habit. Uh, I started yeah, fucking boxing. Right. Well, coke it, made I me just, feel alive, It was because when I was fucking deep in that depression, coke was one of the only things that made me yeah, feel alive. Yeah, yeah. And then I fucking sparred, 
got punched in the fucking face. I was like, ooh. Yeah. This is interesting. It, this is a, it's a buzz. This and, is interesting. And, you know, it's like walking out on the it. lights. And, oh, there are loads of people watching and that buzz you get when you're walking out. Yeah. It, it's unreal. It's yeah. like nothing else. Yeah. And it's one of these things where people go on roller coasters for experience. People do bungee jumps for experience. Yeah. This is an experience you want to do in your yeah. life. Yeah. I would not want to think that I did never ever had a fight in my life. Yeah. I think it's like, it's just well, one of those things. Sometimes you don't get that option. Yeah. Some blokes just, you're just going to fucking end up in a fight. Yeah. You were talking about the weekend. I want, I want guys that... I think you're saying blue belts should have a distinct advantage over other fucking Everybody. anyone in the street. Yeah, I think there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of guys who can grapple, right? And that's great. Yeah. But for to get a blue belt, for, for me to put you forward for a blue belt, yeah. like you have to be able to win a fight against yeah. a normal bloke yeah. Yeah. similar yeah. size. Yeah. Like not just be able to grapple them and submit them and tap them and, yeah. and score some points on them. Yeah. You have to be able to beat them in an actual fight. Yeah. Like mm. jiu is for fighting. Yeah. But with the what we were just talking about there, I'm moving a little bit away from everyone should have a fight. I think everyone should be able to train. And my gym runs how I everyone think, you know, so, Sometimes, maybe it's just everyone should spar. I don't yeah. even think that. No, Do I don't, no, I don't think that. Like, I mean, it's I, like saying... I just think it's one of them things that I would have I hated if I never experienced. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think like, it's, it's, but it's not for everyone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's 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 not. And like some people, some people just uh, just shine in fights, and some people just fucking curl up and, and can't do yeah. it. Yeah. And it's it's one of them things, but... Yeah. The opportunity should be there for everyone. So, yeah. like, like the the classes I run at the gym, yeah. like everyone should be able to train. And man, I've, yeah. I've thought a lot about this recently because I want to make my fight team a little bit more elite. I don't just want anyone to be able to step in because even if you step in to to spar somebody, you're sparring someone who might want to be world champion. If you step in for one amateur fight, in my eyes, you have to maybe either want to be world champion or be willing to fight somebody who wants to be world champion. Mm. You don't know whether that guy. So even amateur boxing, you don't know whether you're walking in there just to have one, I'll just have one amateur fight. Yeah. You're fighting Tyson Fury <laughs> when he was an amateur one. Like yeah. you, you can't fight here when he's an amateur one. So, 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 like, so it is dangerous. And yeah. I, I sat and thought about this and I was like, look, everyone can play football. Yeah. Anyone, some people just want to have a kick out in the street. Yeah. Some people mm. don't ever want to play an 11 side game or competitive or play any rules or yeah. regulations. But just because you want to do it, you should be able to. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can go and play in the Premier League. Yeah. I think, like, yeah. You don't have to be. You can play heads and volleys. Yeah. So you don't yeah. have to be elite. However, like if you were going to play competitive fighting because you don't play it, yeah. and yeah. you want to fight at a high Head level amateur fight. or professional, you have to one be good, yeah. two be hungry, yeah. three be disciplined, four have a little bit of something that most other people don't have, yeah. and I don't think everyone has what it takes. What is that? It's craziness. Yeah, it's a little I summed it up in two words the other day, just off a training session I ran. Uh, ruthlessness and yeah. resilience. Yeah. You have to be willing to kill another man. Yeah. Or be not actually kill them and want yeah. to kill them, yeah. but be willing to go to the lengths where the referee potentially saves Hurt a life. Yeah. Yeah. And Hurt the them. resilience to have somebody giving you a beating and want to get back and win. Yeah. Like you can't fold in a fight. Yeah. You know, like you have to, I only, I only want to put people in fights who are like, they can be two rounds down and they're going to go and finish the guy. In the yeah. Game. They're not going to go, all, be all in. they're not going to sulk. Yeah. They're not going to go, I'm two rounds down. Break that jaw in the first is, round and then yeah. not yeah. the game. Yeah. 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 Like, like <laughs> yeah. ruthless yeah. and resilient. Yeah. Like that punches dangerous. through. That, dangerous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's yeah. dangerous yeah. to himself. <laughs> ruthless to everybody else. Yeah. That, that punch he threw was the hardest punch he threw in that fight. The, fight, the punch that knocked him out. It just looked different than everything else. It yeah. was almost like he just went, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was some hip rotation. Uh, that yeah, man. It was a good like Ian Patrick Swayze <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> like it just, it just looked different. Do you know when you watch the whole fight and then you watch that bit? It was just like, yeah. it yeah. was just like, yeah. louder, yeah, it's good, bigger. Like, yeah. Ah, yeah, I've had enough of this. <laughs> hey, is that the best punch you've ever thrown? Uh, I, I, I probably, I, off the result, I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I love it. But so, like, so let's, yeah. let's. I want to go back to this chat about fighting and like MMA because we talk about this all the time. What do you think? I mean, I, I mean, your answer is probably going to be biased, but do you think everyone should give MMA, Jiu Jitsu, some kind of martial arts a blast? I think guaranteed, right? Ninety nine point nine percent of every people who I've ever met, yeah. if they've started training mixed martial arts, it's changed their life for the better. Yeah. And that's not just because I own yeah. a gym or because I do it myself. Yeah, that is just because it promotes healthy eating. It promotes everyone in the gym's got like dedication. It's fitness. Anyone you know yourself, how better you feel yeah. when you're training when yeah, you're doing anything. So. Yeah. And it gives. I've seen it. I've seen it through young people straight away that the confidence they get just not of fighting people, just of knowing that if something did kick off yeah they, they maybe got a bit more of a chance than what they didn't have yeah i think it's a, i think it's a it, it's no-brainer that yeah. it changes people's lives for the better and yeah, i've always yeah. seen that i agree do you know what i mean i agree 
Definitely. You'll have seen that a lot as well. I, I You've get, had hundreds of people through that fucking gym. Yeah, I, th- I think the that everyone should train and everyone should be able to fight and everyone should be able to defend themselves. I've seen nervous, shy people gain crazy amounts of confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been mean, fucking strangled by most of them. They'll occasionally even back at me. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm like, out. look, just because you're getting done. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, great to see. I love it when yeah. you get someone quiet, you come to the gym and, yeah. and, you, and they're so introverted and then you see them just loosen up and yeah. just, they get a little bit more confidence about the self and yeah. it's it's lovely to see. Yeah. It's just the way they carry themselves, isn't it? Yes, definitely. I think the biggest thing though is especially it's a bit I don't want to use the SPG word of tribe too yeah. much, but being part of a community means a lot more to men than yes. they'll ever admit. Yes. Right. So like Melissa has a group on our WhatsApp where her and the girls all yeah. chat and message. I was thinking, I don't have that with any of my mates, and I don't oh. think many do you have that? You I've probably three. I've a group got of lads where you're like the football, football. team, the yeah, fighting yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's organized stuff where they just talk you and just chat. Get pictures of Blokes, dicks. <laughs> That's all I get. Oh, I'm sick of them coming through. The big black guy with a big dick. Aye. We go to be WhatsApp. These yeah. of these groups. Not even a group. And we're going on a sitting stand on, on the end of the bed. Pictures. That you're honest. Aye. Weird shit. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> like I'm not even going to tell you what. This is embarrassed. If your kids have a way in your WhatsApp, you fuck. Oh, they all go straight on to me. On the camera because sometimes the kids will be bored and they'll just go through my camera roll. They'll be like, oh, what's this? I'm like, oh, fucking. Oh, that's me, mate, man, dingo. But I feel like the men need a group. Yeah, do you know, like, and I think they people do. come, and as much as the train's deadly serious, yeah. that they might not, s- and men don't say much to each other, but like rolling with each other, putting pressure on each other, making each other uncomfortable, it yeah. gets that little it's frustration how close out. You come to someone when you, you know, like, uh, it's a, it's sort of like this instant connection when you when you sparred them or or something like that, or if you've had a roll together straight away, you've got this sort of weird little bond where we've just uh, we've just like fought each other, yeah. but we we're still mates. Yeah, it so it's like that's how close we are. Yeah, yeah. We can attack each other, but yeah. still be friends afterwards. I yeah. think it's some kind of fucking like that. What you're describing there. Is some kind of like primal bloke, yeah, caveman thing in it. A hundred percent. It is some kind of weird fucking DNA thing, yeah. like some kind of weird every cell animal. thing. Every happens. animal, yeah. Is it's it? Every animal it's survival, design. isn't it? Yeah. It's so fucking weird. It's like some kind of cells. Your cells kind of fucking can yeah. go together <laughs> with this guy yeah. you just had a fucking fight with, and now you're fucking mates. Ah, uh, yeah. And after straight away, you saw you, you feel that. And it doesn't matter where you're from, from either, does it? Yeah. Doesn't matter where you're yeah. from. Doesn't matter how much money no, you've got. No doesn't matter how fucking famous you are. Yeah, none of that matters on the matter. Or nah, like, nah, nah. I think it's an easy way like it makes everyone humble and yeah. but also confident at the same time so, yeah. so like in, in MMA gyms I think yeah exactly what you said there about humble I think MMA gyms are a brilliant place for that I know I've been to a few boxing gyms and I, I think well, there's a lot of people I don't know if everyone else has got the same sort of opinion but in some of the boxing gyms that I've been to people have a, bit, a few more chips on their shoulders and you uh, know what I mean and it, it's because like if they're the better boxer then they're the better boxer yeah. or whatever yeah, you've got fucking big gloves on yeah but the better no boxer, strangling yeah the better boxer could walk into an MMA gym and they might be better on their feet but then this other guy this little guy might just to get you down yeah. and then he strangles you because you weren't it's a different ball game isn't it? more, more humbling where yeah. this little guy and you know what it's like if the if the big you know you get your big hard men around town it's because I think, it, reputation. I think jujitsu requires and this is probably why I struggle it requires some level of intelligence right yeah yeah like it's so it serene, requires yeah. a little bit more intelligence Definitely. I think than just fucking having a well, boxing like boxing present to mind do you think just what? being present in the moment yeah, yeah. Making decisions fast, it's decision making. Well, see, I think what it is is more like, say, boxing. It's really instinctual. It's like I'm going to throw these at your face fast. You need to get out of the way. Yeah. But on the floor, it's like there's you not like more thinking, thing, isn't there? There's not things flying at yeah. you. There's things just tricking you and yeah. just like sneaking around. Then before you know, it, your arms up your back. Yeah. yeah. Without and you didn't see it coming. Yeah. In boxing, you know what's happening. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and hit you. You're gonna try and hit me. I think. I think the thing with boxing is I find that it's like, there's like six punches or something that can ever be thrown at you. Yeah. It's not that many combos. You're only really gonna get punched in the body or in the fucking head. Yeah. There's so much, in jiu there's so much more to fucking think about. Oh, definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah. With, the, pu- again, B, with C, the punches, there's D. not much coming, I. Yeah. There's also the pressure as well. So like, I've sparred good boxers and they're not good boxers, they're good punchers. Yeah. And then I've sparred boxers who have good footwork. Yeah. And it's completely different oh, because yeah. of the pressure. And but when you roll jiu jitsu with someone who's better, they always have better pressure than you. And they're always crushing you. Dude, I so like in Glenn, boxing. I rolled with Glenn Powder the other week. He said he was the same weight as me. I was like, dude, you're at least fucking 120 <laughs> kilos. <laughs> Fuck it's me. It's crazy how like how, how much heavier like him. Like when he's oh, on top, yeah, yeah. It's like fucking it feels like you could go with someone kilos. twice the weight yeah. and they wouldn't feel nowhere near it's as heavy. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, yeah. isn't it? Leverage and it's I don't know, the pressures and it's it's so strange. If you did jujitsu done right, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. 
Glenn's a mad scientist to jiu jitsu as well. <laughs> yeah. he, he's always like on something, and this is his thing, yeah, and he's going to crush you a bit. Yeah. He's got to be doing this thing with oh. thumbs out at the minute. Yeah, and he's got to yeah. do this thing all the time. Yeah, yeah he's, 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 he's always on to like one thing, and then he's he's yeah, on it like he's he, just yeah. scarf. He came taught a seminar, was crushing everyone. Next thing you know, I'm destroying people's lives. The next thing, I'm speaking to Glenn on the phone, he's like. Yeah, but if you do this with breathing, it's useless. And I'm like, yeah, why yeah, don't yeah. tell people that? Yeah. Why are you showing me something? They're making it useless. Do you know? Do you know the reason why I always get on talking about jujitsu is because for the typical guy listening, who my I'd say my target audience is the guys who I'm trying to get the message across to. I think jujitsu is such a great sport because you're not getting punched in the head. You've got all these benefits that we're talking about here. You've got, I mean, I love jujitsu because I don't feel like I have to do it. I feel like I get to do it. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not like when I have to go and fucking train with weights or kettlebells or go fucking running yeah. where I don't like, I have to force myself to do it. Jujitsu is something that you get to do for whatever reason it is that day. And I'm like, I said, all oh my guys, I'm like, listen, you got to try jujitsu. You got to yeah. try jujitsu. It's, it's try so, it, it is. It's, uh, it's uh, just a great outlet, you know, and it's like, and it's so. It and comes back, full, comes back to what Alex it, says, you know? the presence of mind. Being in the moment. It's like violent yeah. meditation. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Violent meditation. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah, great way. Yeah. That's it. Nah, I get that occasionally now, but the problem is for me, it used to be my thing like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now I coach. Even when I'm rolling with Davey, I'm not rolling with Davey. I'm thinking about what Davey's doing wrong and what yeah. he needs to do better. Yeah. So like, sometimes I have, to sh- I have to now try and shut off to do my jiu-jitsu and enjoy it. Do your jiu-jitsu. If that Ooh. makes sense and yeah. enjoy it. But you're also um, probably, even when you're rolling with lads in the gym, you probably think, is this guy ready for another stripe? Is this uh, guy a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes I'm just practicing techniques and going to show them, but it become yes. my jiu-jitsu has now become selfless. So yeah. I kind of lost that. Me and Melissa went surfing the other day. Yeah. And it, felt, down there, like, down the it front. felt like the first, honest, I loved it. It, it felt like the really? first time I did jiu-jitsu. Really? It felt, I, I was like buzzing. I was just waiting for the next wave. <laughs> yeah. Honest, I was like yeah. just so focused on yeah. tunnel vision. That I didn't care like that I had classes to teach on the night yeah. or what had went wrong on the yeah. morning's training yeah. session. Not there, you know, the N- nah, we Go were just forward. in the sea yeah. and it was mint. Yeah. It gave us that, yeah. like I'd done jiu-jitsu. Like as if I went to a different jiu-jitsu gym and just rocked up, put a white belt on and trained. Do you know? <laughs> like the, it wasn't my job anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to fucking put em off as well. So be like, yeah. You not do jiu-jitsu, mate. What's that? <laughs> 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 yeah, rugby. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Is that your next what? thing? So I'm going to, I'm going to, I think Tomorrow, Man, I think it'd be great tomorrow you, I was going to put some, pri- I was going to do some privates and I thought, surf. <laughs> I might just get Melissa to drop me off at the beach, rent the board and just give it a shot. I then like going on my, it, yeah. it was the first thing I've ever seen. Like, yeah, even, not, even when I walked the dog, did you just go in? We did a one, a, like a private it's lesson. Cool, and the woman, the woman after said, she was like, look, you better off just practicing what you do now. And then when you want to learn how to turn, get you can stand lesson. up, get another lesson, learn to turn, yeah. and then practice that. Yeah. And she said, you better off just renting the board. Yeah. So I think I might go down. If not, I'm gonna go Sunday. Me and Melissa are gonna go together again. Um, but back to jiu-jitsu. The reason, like, I found that that empty headedness that I was just present, yeah. which you find in jiu-jitsu because there's dangers always present. The problem when you become a coach is the even the dangers you let you sometimes letting someone practice and you start to understand it's practice and it becomes about the the sport and the result. Yeah. Where it doesn't like do you? It's just training. It's just yeah. fun. Yeah. Um. And why ordinary people should do it more than anything. Yes. I get this all the time. Like, I, I, I was going to start the gym, but I want to do this. I fancy doing this. I'm like, look, you're fat. Yeah. Right. If you want to start the gym or want to get fit, you would already be lifting weights or running on a treadmill and yeah. you're not. What you need is a sport. Yeah. Now, if you're in your thirties, you're probably too old to play football regular, right? <laughs> you probably weren't going to. You can yeah. start yeah. jujitsu at 30. Yeah. Do it as a regular thing. It can become a sport that keeps you fit and healthy. And also you get to be around young guys who want to fight in the UFC, guys who do fight in the UFC. Yeah. You get to be around elite level sportsmen, yeah. which doesn't happen in any other sport. Who, You're not who, rocking up to play five aside with Cristiano yeah. Ronaldo. Who but you can come, him? what? Not just who are in the gym, but who yeah. fucking like, train with you, him. you can't go and play five aside with Ronaldo, but you can come and do a bit grappling yeah. with Davy Grant. Yeah. 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 That, that's, I think that's very unique to like jujitsu and well, even yeah, MMA in general, yeah. isn't it? That yeah. not many other sports you can kind of play with a big ball uh, as. That's it like. But I went, I went to New York twice and the first time I went uh, I got role Marcelo Garcia yeah. and like that that he's the Ronaldo yeah. you know like yeah, of grappling yeah, yeah. At, the t- at the time he was the man in sport Jiu Jitsu yeah. like the best he yeah. was winning ADCC winning the Mundials yeah. he was the man yeah. right and he was like let's train and I was like <laughs> where do I bow yeah. <laughs> and then, anyway the next yeah. time I went I took a few guys from the gym yeah. and he didn't want me to pay Refused to charge. Really? Remembered why I was there last time. Why I'd been in New York. Yeah. Um, 
he knew like that had been there to try out for the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. He was like buzzing that I'd brought people to train. Yeah. And he was like, he just had, uh, I think he just done something to his shoulder. And he was like, I'm so sorry, I can't train. I'm so sorry. I'm thinking, you're the best <laughs> in the world at what you're doing. And you're yeah. apologizing to me because you really can't roll. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like? Yeah. Do you think you can be, do you think there's an age where you can't, I mean, obviously there's fucking mad ages, but I didn't really start training judicial until I was 37. And everyone always thinks they're too old. I'm like, I don't think you can be too old to start judo. Nah, I don't think so. What are you trying to achieve? Yeah. So that's saying I'm too it, old that, means you're putting yeah. something on a pedestal that you have to something. go and achieve. Yeah. Like, you, with you to, if you want to compete, you're going to do massive it's competition. It's the same as saying I'm too old to go and run on a fucking track. It's a personal yeah. journey. Yeah. It's, a, it's a personal journey. Now, yeah. obviously, if you've had a, a rough life or a rough op- occupation, you've got yeah. bad knees, yeah. jiu-jitsu might not be great for you. Yeah. Okay? But unless you're trying, like... Someone comes in even in the late 20s now and they go, oh, I want to fight in the UFC. My brain's going, not going to happen, son. <laughs> Might have a fight in KFC. Do you know, like, <laughs> not like, like, I'm a realist. Like, mid-20s now I'm getting like, like Volkanovski won the UFC belt, started 22, but he was an elite level rugby player. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. come in having done nothing at 25, 26, I'm going to say like, UFC might be unrealistic. I am AF amateur championships. You could get yeah, there in a couple of years. It, Do you know, like and give people realistic goal. goals? But yeah. with Jiu Jitsu, like there's people put I want my black belt. Yeah. Like that's that's good and it's great, but yeah. just enjoy training. Yeah. What you'll realise is um a lot of guys who are actually shit yeah. brag about their belt. Yeah. Mm. The guys who just train, just train. Yeah. Now the belt is a nice achievement, it's a good thing to aim for, yeah. but just better is a better thing to aim for. Yeah. Like I want to be better today than yeah, I was yeah. yesterday. One of the odd things about jujitsu is that also, this is what I've found, everybody else is getting better. So you're not quite sure if you're getting better or not. Yeah, especially you know what I mean? in a good gym. Yeah. yeah, like we've got, like the lads that I'm training with are training all the time, probably more than me. So I'm rolling with them, I'm thinking, I'm fucking getting worse here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't actually know sometimes whether you're getting better or not. So I think you have to have that. I'm just gonna fucking train. Yeah. This, this yeah. is the other thing. That. Do you know what he said to me the other day? We haven't been training in the gi, right? We've just been training all gi, and I've been doing all right. And then he fucking smashes in the gi the other week. And I was in a bit of a huff, and he said, "You are twice me age, you know." I was like, "Oh, cheers for that morale." <laughs> <laughs> You're twice me age, really? Bro? I didn't just say that. I said I train e- most days of the week. Yeah. You train twice a week. Twice me fucking age. I was like, "You've just literally <laughs> cut me balls right off." I gotta think that 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 whole you can't. I think there's. I want to know that I'm getting better, but also I think you've just got to fucking let it go and just fucking. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, how can you judge? Right? So in a role, this is the thing that, like, I never judge how people do with each other in a role. Yeah, and you should never judge how many. Ah, oh, fuck! I got tap loads of him. He tapped us a million times. Like we could roll and I could not submit you. Yeah, and you'd be like, I didn't get tapped there. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't trying. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. how do you know what I was trying to? I might have been practicing there. Yes. We're not competing. Yeah. So the only way to really test yourself and be like, who's better, me or him, is yeah. to fight. Yeah. 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 It's to fight. Yeah, That's yeah. it. So like, so it's pointless. Yeah. It's pointless that comparison with others. Yeah. It's just, do I feel better? Do I move better? Am I enjoying it the same I way? Was I thinking? Yeah. Was I making good decisions? Yeah. How did I feel under pressure? Yeah. And I stop leaving me arm dangling just because I'm yeah, gassed. And just yeah. like, it's just like, I'm a, I'm a problem solving better. I'm a, no, no, like, just doing the right thing more. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. uh, that's that's a, the best way to look at it, sort of thing. Whether regardless of how it's going, yeah. you think am I am I making as many mistakes or yeah. am I doing sort of the right? You thing? can't be too attached you know to the outcome of but any of that. That's why I was like asking you. you. It's a life skill. So yeah. all the things you'll get from jujitsu that handling pressure, good decision making, patience, composure. Yeah. Without the skills, they they're all good qualities. Having like now, I'm, do I don't have any of them. Right, just really good. But patience, ah, gone. Yeah. Composure, nah. Yeah. I sit here for five minutes and you all left the room. I'd be smashing the place up. Yeah. Okay, but they're all good life skills and yeah. things that you can you can take away I from you too that add to the techniques Dude, that so you, the, fucking, you work. There's so many lessons that you can take from jujitsu and put in. Don't be a dickhead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't Definitely. be a dickhead. Or someone gets a knee in your chest. Business, yeah. You can apply it to relationships. Dude, I've got a famous story that I tell on the stage when we did that seminar on Rush Day with John Kavanagh. And I felt so fucking out of place. And he came over, you could tell that. Because I, I just, I hadn't just started, but I was about fucking, maybe about four months in. You went for the photo. And I felt, I, <laughs> I felt like a fucking idiot. And I, honestly, that photo's been on every fucking stage. <laughs> every, every webinar. That, thousands of people have seen that photo now. And he, he, he literally, he, he, he came over to me, he said, listen, he said, you're just a fuck." he basically said, you're just, you're just a fucking white belt, that's all. He said, I just started jujitsu before you. That's all he said. Mm. I was like, that makes a lot of fucking sense. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I can apply that lesson to anything. The reason, so we've had a, a bunch of guys that are 
influencers, influencers, if you like, on fucking Instagram and that. And they're like, well, I started with fucking zero followers as well. Yeah. yeah. You started with one Everyone just got their own journey, aren't they? Yeah, you, just you've, got to, you've got to fucking be willing, I think, to be shit. Mm. Yeah, I, you've got to be willing and eat shit and eat, ah, and eat shit. <laughs> you've got to be willing to do that and kind of enjoy being shit as well for a bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Anything, like I see that in one in fighting, two in my business in the yeah. gym. The gym is a business. I have like I think a lot of gym owners pretend they're not a business and they just train <laughs> fighters. Just like nah, look, the, the busier my gym is, and the more people I can help and who I can teach jiu jitsu to and teach MMA to the easier it is for me to provide for my fighters. Yeah. Then the guys who want to fight, who, yeah. who are going to fight for peanuts at some point, that yeah. you can't financially run a gym just on fighters. Yeah. Mm. Like it just doesn't work. Yeah. And I just think, now we have like nearly 200 members. I think we've got probably the busiest MMA gym in the Northeast. Yeah. I, I, I think quite considerably. Yeah. And then I think back and think, I was really shit at this when I first started and I'd just do a little cash tin and who would pay would pay and who wouldn't. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I, was in, I was in two and a half grand's worth of rent arrears oh, yeah. at a community centre while working the door to fund it. And, and, tiny, and the tiny little fucking room. Bear, right, I just right. didn't pay my rent. I, I, <laughs> shit, really? And the rent, was the I, rent peanuts? 70 pound a week. Fucking hell. <laughs> but I wasn't really? making enough money. I was teaching a few privates. But, I, but obviously well, I was trying to fight. So I was like, I was training. I was having to eat good food. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but I, and I think about how bad I was and how many stupid decisions I made with that yeah. towards now. It's like an old science classroom or something. It was my oh, old English was classroom. Right. It, was yeah. my, it was my old English classroom. Tiny. But yeah. at the time, all the like all the pros from the northeast yeah, would come amazing. come to train. Yeah. And, like yeah. that's all in the coach. Yeah. yeah, people just look at me like I was just thinking it's like. like for, 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 honestly, oh, that room must be about the size of this. Room. Uh, this was about, this is probably about exactly it, uh, isn't it? It's not not far off at all. And at the time, there was you, Kurt Fisher. Oh. Like, uh, this is like sort of like the the alumni of the northeast uh, MMA, MMA crew, yeah. and there's me in my little I mean? community centre room where the rent was getting paid. <laughs> Dude, isn't that mad? So you've had to learn to go through being shit at business to being fucking good at business. Yeah, I was absolutely terrible, and now being not, I wouldn't say I'm good at business, but being aware better. of business, better yeah. at business. aware of business. I yeah. like to say because I don't want to think better. Almost, I'm not you. Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> I'm not trying. But I'm aware of it. I'm aware yeah. that it exists. That, yeah. But it's not my dream. Yeah. yeah. It just helps. Yes. Yeah. But shit like that you can't do without making the mistake. I was there's so no shit at it. I think you need it. it it's there's no book curve, out there going, right, mean? this is how you start a, a, an MMA gym. What do you yeah. mean? GCSE business studies, right? <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Man. No, but like I was so bad at it and I don't even real, didn't realise now that like things are run properly. Like my you business thrived, like thrived in a pandemic that we, we've come back. With a better setup, the yeah. facility's twice as good as what it was. Yeah. The members are dying to come back, yeah. and I just think about that community centre room where I stuck some mats to the wall with super glue. <laughs> Dude, you know the worst part, Davey? They're still there. Are they? Uh, no, no. They're, they're, no. Come on no. Now. I'm I'm the boxing, someone else, someone, uh, Steve East, went in. We had been a thingy and said the mats were there. He asked if I could buy them. I said, if you drop half them off, you can buy the other one. No way. <laughs> and Davey Pinky uses them now. I give them to him. Oh, then that's not what they are. The, the black and red ones, Shit, yeah. That's mad, man. I, did, I just didn't pick them up. I literally bailed. I think I owed them about 700 pounds <laughs> yeah. to when I moved here. Really? That's I just <laughs> mad. Well, that community centre will be closing down soon. I think I'll knock that fuck Is that Brinky or Lee? Nah, it's still open for 10 years. It's because of the swim pool. Oh, I mean, why? well, I left five years ago, so five more years. Because the swim pool has to be open so long because the council funded. Wow, that's crazy. But they might knock the rest down around the pool. Yeah. But yeah. Because didn't you have one in Legged? Yeah. Nah, I rented mat space in Lego. Remember that right. one? So I rented man, the one upstairs. What was that upstairs? It was upstairs in, yeah, upstairs in the kickboxing gym. Scott Ramsey and Koi Ling were there. Oh, the fight factory. Yeah. Fight and that, so I teach classes a few times a week. There was columns in the middle uh, of the class. I remember that, boy. Uh, used to fucking roll into the columns. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, Shit. yeah, because I used to share that gym with Koi Ling, who now have the own Newton Scots at the judo club right. now. And then right. I would rent the mat like a few times a week there. But thinking about it, I went from teaching those three classes to... I went to Bringburn after that. So, hey, so I went from that big gym to, to, to Bringburn, which how was smaller, so I could have six days week. Just... So uh, what used to be fighting fit used to run an open mat on a Friday. Right. So I would train at uh, what was called Combat Forum on nice. it's Wednesday night and Saturday. So I had my first amateur fight training twice a week. Oh, really? Twice a week. Twice a week. Yeah, oh, yeah. On a Wednesday and a Saturday. Fucking hell. That's right. how it was back then. Yeah. Well, nowadays, you've got amateur fighters, right? I'm the first fight. They train in 12 times a week, strength and conditioning programs, and got sponsors, everything. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, I, 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 I did low kicks, <laughs> th classes, an hour long. Uh, 
A couple of low kicks on a kick shield, a couple of one twos, yeah. uh, a few arm bars from your guard, <laughs> roll. <laughs> and then you know what a miss bar was? We didn't, we didn't even, even do, do techniques. techniques. No, it was like, right, we'll do a fitness circuit and then we'll spar or we'll roll. And that was it. Fuck. And it was like, where's the middle bit? Where, yeah. where, 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 how do we get out of the floor? floor? <laughs> what about this wrestling thing? What's that? That's mad. Did we, honestly, it was not, we didn't mad. have a clue, man. So, so you used to teach on a Friday? I don't know. Mat. And so they'd have an open mat and... At the time, I'd do a little bit of training with Jack Sexton. Yeah. So I met him. He trained at, I think he was training at, maybe he was training where he then. He was, might, was training somewhere else, but yeah. we'd both go there and we'd end up showing our friends. So like Horsey, Horsey came down to that old mat and yeah. started when he was like 15. Yeah. And we'd, we'd just end up teaching other people. Then Horsey Hill Boxing Gym. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Jack sorted that out. They'd give us the room on a Monday night yeah. and they'd put the mats down. So, and all the money went in the tin, we got nothing, yeah. but we'd start teaching people and people would come there and yeah. next thing you know, me and Jack are running classes there because, yeah. and it was more to get training partners. Yeah. Like everyone I taught was like, a, was a body for me to train yeah. with. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, like a few guys who done amateur boxing fights, like Adam Eagles, yeah. we'd use them because they'd be good boxing sparring yeah. and then we'd show them some jiu-jitsu. We used to have to do that. I used to have to dot around a lot. Did you know what I mean? Yeah, so I'd have to go to like gyms. Gym. Yeah, I'd have to go like so I'd go to the tie box. I'd go to go and do my tie boxing at the tie boxing gym. You know what I mean? I'd go and do the box with the boxers. I'd yeah. go to jiu jitsu gyms to roll. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because nowadays it's like getting sort of. I feel I feel like I am I like we can give it all from our gym yeah. and give it, and give them everything they need from MMA. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whereas before it was hard to get that. Yeah. It was like it was, it's still a pretty young sport anyway. But there was yeah. not not like any guys who'd been there, done that, bought the t shirt around me, yeah. where I could just go and get everything from. Yeah. It had to be. I used to like I'd, I'd go to boxing gyms I'd go Thai boxing with Craig Jones Craig was good actually Craig was one of the guys where he'd, he'd fought MMA yeah. like it wasn't for him but he'd fought MMA and understood yeah. it yeah. and he he was really good training me for like the Naramani fight yeah. which was good um, but I'd been to boxing gyms and all they do is keep putting the best guys in to try and fill us in or not yeah. and then the thing, this is, uh, you were talking about boxing gyms Paul one of the reasons why I think there's more egos in boxing gyms is the coaches are absolutely terrible Yeah, most of them yeah. Now you get good coaches yeah. uh, where they are experienced to box themselves and then coach. But I'm telling you now, amateur boxing gyms, the guys who get to do the coaching goes quite often, not yeah. all the time. So this yeah. isn't criticizing like yeah. some other outliers yeah. uh, of volunteers. Yeah. yeah, Who volunteers? The good fighters and the guys who understand boxing or the kid who wishes he knew how to box. Mm. And then guess what? They get an ego about them. Yeah. I had a boxing coach. So I had seven or eight professional fights at this point and I booked three amateur boxing fights and they all dropped out the week of the fight. Really? And then he rang us on like a Thursday. I had, I'd always had my classes covered for these because I was teaching classes yeah. at the time. He rang us on a Thursday. There's a fight there on Friday night if you want. I'm like, oh, it's like every time this happens, I get covered for my class and it doesn't come off. Yeah. And he was like, well, if you don't want to fight then. Yeah. I'm like, I've had nine professional MMA <laughs> fights. I don't even think you could fight sleep. I was furious. But it was just the ego of like yeah. amateur boxing coaches because again, they're the volunteer and then they're older than everyone else and they put themselves on a pedestal but they know nothing, a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, and because the good guy, the good boxers don't often coach. Yeah, the, I've always wondered that. It's volunteers. I've always, I've always wondered why you get a guy who who is a pro fighter does all right for himself, and then doesn't. There's not many of them step into coaching in boxing, is that? Do you know what I mean? You got a Jamie Moore stepping in now, but there's not many guys who have gone from. Um, being great fighters to then coaching maybe it's money I don't know I don't think yeah. but you don't really see it like we've had kids in Shields who are great boxers good boxers have done alright pros and then had to go and get full time jobs and I'm like why don't you just coach people they haven't yeah. been coached great themselves so, yeah. so they don't understand coaching like I was I was quite lucky in the fact that uh, the first gym I went to obviously Stu was great yeah. uh, then after that I trade with Eddie yeah. Eddie taught me how to teach myself yeah. so that was the greatest gift anyone could ever give me he didn't yeah. just show me arm bars he showed me how to learn how to think how yeah. to how to just be able to train and get better without yeah. this is an arm bar this is a triangle just yeah. just how to drill how to practice how to train live yeah. I then trained with Pete Irvin Pete was like the standout fighter in the northeast yeah, and Pete had travelled the world and he, he brought a lot of information from like he'd been to Brazil to train so he gave me a lot of information which wasn't kind of wasn't here yet, if that makes sense, or wasn't as as much as the internet was a thing. It wasn't as available on the internet, yeah. but more than anything, so I learned I learned how to coach a little bit from how Pete coached, which yeah. was bits from Brazil. I learned how to learn from how Eddie coached me. Yeah, uh, then training with Carl, I'd, Carl, yeah. who we both trained with, I'd met Carl years before and just went down and stopped at his house. Yeah, Carl Tanswell, this is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Carl was like, even when I was fighting, so I fought Artem Lobov 
who was an SPG fighter on the same card that Saul Rogers fought. Oh, was he an John. SPG fighter then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Autumn's he? always been SPG. Oh, he? So, and Carl was cornering Saul Rogers against, I remember this like so vividly, it's John McGuire. Right. Okay. Mm. And I remember I just finished my fight. Even when I was warming up for my fight, I was watching what Carl was doing with Saul. Yeah. I just had it in my head that he's the best coach in the world. Yeah. I want to be like him. Yeah. Even though I'm about to fight and then win this Ooh. fight, maybe fight for a title. Yeah. I was still like, I'm going to coach. That I had good mentors as coaches. Yeah. Which made me a good coach. So like after my fight, traveling fight, most people go and get a pint or get some chocolate or whatever. Yeah. I was like, take my time getting ready. You wanted to watch it? Uh, yeah. Because I wanted to watch Carl Warm solo. Yeah. That's, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And then I went and sat front row and did I watch the fight? Nope. What did I, I do? Him. I watched Carl Corner Saw. Yeah. yeah. I sat front row. Um, Ryan Roddy was sat next to us, and I watched Carl really? on a soul. Yeah, he's that good at what he did. He, yeah. it was, he so was it you that found out about him, or was it you? Like, did you did you like, know him first? No, what is I think because Alex knew him first. I yeah. sort of like, uh, but I just made the transition first. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. To where I wanted um, SPG because we had a good thing going on a yeah. bit, yeah, and it was, yeah. it was good. But um, but I felt like I, I just needed uh, Carl. I yeah. just thought he, oh, he was brilliant at what he did. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, so I sort of it, it was a hard decision to make because I was training with all these, all my mates and everything. These yeah. are like they were some of my best mates, and I was like, look, I'm 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 sorry, guys. I'm I'm going to go and train somewhere else. I'm the ultimate fighter, and then pff, gone. Oh, it? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't well, that turn, like, turned up in his ultimate fighter track. He went, lads, oh, I'm off. No, he didn't. He did. <laughs> It wasn't that at all, but it was like, and I just sort of, and, and it was a big, it was a big life change, you know, to, yeah. to start training in Manchester. Yeah. It was crazy. Oh, so were you traveling down there? Uh, I was going down on a Monday, staying on a Monday and I come back on a Tuesday, going down on a Wednesday, staying on a Wednesday and I come back on a Thursday and then there and back on a Friday. Oh, fucking hell. And, and sometimes I was going down there and back every day that week. Fucking so hell. it would be like five hours travel for an hour and a half's training. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that was like five days a week. Yeah. And then uh, it was, it was, it was tough. This was before I had the full-time gym. I, I had my own bit of my dad's gym. Yeah. But what I was doing is I was setting privates up when I came back. Yes. So I was teaching privates as much as I could when I was home. Yeah. And, but I didn't have like, morning. yeah, because I didn't have anything to commit to class-wise. Yeah. But then um, I opened my own SPG. Yeah. And then it got a little bit harder. So it was like, I'd, I'd get people to cover my classes on some of the nights and I'd go down, stop down or go there and back in a day. Yeah. And it, it's testing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And uh, and any time I was training at home, then I would go and train with Alex as well. How how long so, ago was all this? This was God. It was, like, it was more like four, five. How was in your corner on your corner when you fought them at Temple Park? At Temple Park, this was my first fight with Colin McConnell. Was it? Yeah. yeah, it was after I fought Rafael Diaz, and I just had Adam and Ryan Roddy. Oh, Ryan, Roddy Ryan Roddy was great. Train Paulo Paulo Boer fight. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, but I knew after that fight, I was like, I'm going to the UFC. Yeah, I said I'm not going to the UFC and. No disrespect to Adam, but have a kid in the corner and one of my training partners. Like, I need a coach. Yes, yeah. You're like, how can I tell people they need a coach? And I was a coach at this point as well, yeah. that they need a coach. And like, I knew my influence and other people. I wanted someone to have that influence on my career. Mm. Like, and Carl was more than just a coach. He was like a bit of a father figure as well and a bit of a mentor. I could go to him with any problem in the world. Mm. And he would help me with that. And it took a lot of the burden of, of a fight camp off me. Yes. Yeah. Do you know, like that? Because you didn't have, you weren't solely in charge of your preparation. No, somebody, like you'd be, you'd be have, having somebody tell you what to do. And I was only going down there two or three days a week, but yeah. I'd tell him everything else I did. Yes, and he'd want to know everything else I yeah, did. Yeah, he, he was then, so involved like that. It was, yeah. it was crazy. Where I'd obviously had Pete. Pete was close to me and helped yeah. us a lot. But yeah. Pete also had his own career at the same time. Yeah. Where the, yeah. the big push for me was, I'm going to go to the UFC. I want someone who's as invested in my career as I am. Yeah. Okay. It was full that, time with me. And on, and I'd already knew he was best. The, like, I still think, imagine, now it would have turned out different, obviously brain scan, that type of thing. Yeah. I always think, that week I went and stopped at Carl's house when he just said, come down, train, don't book a hotel, just get a train down, and then yeah. let us stop at his house. Third time I'd met him. Yeah. Give us a key to his house, just come and go as you please. Yeah. Um, I always thought, because I, I I'd already dropped out of uni at that point, I was going to reapply just to move to Manchester. Yeah. And I always wonder, like, how my life would have turned out and yeah. how good I would have been had I went down there. Yeah. Now, yeah. I might have been a better fighter, I may not have been a good coach because I got to learn how to coach, coaching, not coaching these, but running sessions, which I was jumping in, yeah. like writing on a little board and like, this is what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah, we were all sort of, it was so like, like, yeah, because we were just like a group of fighters. And that whole we? group essentially now is coaching, right? It's yeah. Like just yeah. About, yeah. So I got like an apprenticeship there and then got almost like a, a master's degree by by yeah. being coached by the, the best coach yeah. in MMA. Yeah. Yeah. So like I almost got like, 
like the icing on the cake. You know, mm. like like yeah. you know how to structure sessions, do this, but this. That cherry on top. So like, so I got this that towards the end yeah. of my career. It so much about coaching, about coaching, not just about fighting, but about coaching from Carl. Carl used to teach us to be coaches as well, didn't he? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, uh, and, and like, uh, then that's the sort of the SPG way where they coach the coaches. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They're like, look, this is what brings people on, and like, so it wasn't just about getting. So to let's be stay on, let's stay on this subject and finish on this subject, right? If we're talking about bringing people on and inspiring people. Like what would you say are some of the biggest things that you've learned through your own career and through coaching people? You can go first, David. It's a hard question. That is. Yeah. It's a deep one. It's a deep one. Um, I don't know. It's, that you is, yeah. It some of the biggest things you've learned about bringing people on, inspiring people, coaching people, like what would you say some of your... So let's just say some of your principles. So you, you've I, probably I, already covered a few of them. I'm not yeah. that much of an inspirational leader. Yeah. Like, it's funny because I, I I had a conversation with Carl about this. I Carl, I used to always uh, see whatever book Carl's reading. I'd go and get, yeah, I'd go and read that. <laughs> but however, I recommend this book to him, and he came up and there's a, I think it was um, Steel and Fire, and it talks about how uh, it's important to plug all the holes in a boat. Yeah. So I'm a I'm not a your sails are really shiny, Davy. Let's sail the ocean. I'm like a you're never gonna get across the ocean with all those holes in the boat. So I don't think I'm an inspirational leader. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll have you back. I'll tell you where there's a problem. I'll shove my finger in a hole in the boat yeah. so you don't sink. Yeah. Like that's that's kind of how I am. So I'm mm. a I'm a problem solver. Yeah. I'm a fixer rather than a, this is your dreams. Go chase it. I'm yeah. not a who hard David Goggins. Yeah. Like, come on, we need to do this. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, you. I'm not that. I'll like, I, I'm not that. And I don't ever try to pretend I'm that. Yeah. I'm a, that's dog shit. Yeah. 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 Don't do that. Yeah. Do I'm, not do it like that. Just, you need to practice that. So what you're essentially saying is one of the one of the one of the, your principles is just tell people the just tell truth. To be yeah, as yeah, honest, be brutally honest. Yeah. Because nothing's and that's with fighting, because nothing's more honest than fighting. Yeah. <clears throat> like Yeah. This kid's coming uh, like I I will not tell a kid this kid comes in, seventeen, eighteen year old, yeah. zero athleticism, yeah. bad coordination. He's like, I want to be UFC champion, I'm not gonna go look. Not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm not going to shit on somebody's dreams. However, I'm going to say, you've got a hell of a lot of work. Yeah, when you're jabbing, I'm going to be like, look, right. look, like hitting the bag like that, that's not good enough. Yeah. When you're hitting the pads, you, are you are you paying attention the whole time? When we're doing pad rounds, are you just disappearing? I talk about this, we're hitting the bag. Yeah. Especially we're doing a lot of bag work at the gym now. And I call it breaking character. Yeah. I'm going to say in pro boxers, you can watch a pro box hit the bag. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they break character all the time. Yeah. If you want to get a lead, don't break out. You get on that bag and you hit it, boom, boom, and you're always on, always on. Most kids who dream about this, and I'm going to say, look, you break out and you don't do want to do it. you know what I say? I would equate this to in, in business, for example. If you, run a, if you want to run a seven-figure, eight-figure company, you've got to act like somebody that already does. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's a lot of money. That's a good, you know, yeah, that's a good, that's a good bit of inspiration. Yeah, I've got big dreams, bro. <laughs> but but it's like it's like anything. Like if you want a great relationship, you've got to act like somebody that's already fucking got one. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You've got to take on their characteristics. You've got to wear those shoes. Yeah. You do. That, now the thing yeah. is, at the minute, most people just want to wear that mask and wear it on social media. Yes. That's yeah. a big problem yes. today. It is. Um, but my biggest thing is to be honest with yourself. So like, yeah. I never like I never thought I was great. I never thought I was good. Yeah. I always thought I could get better. Mm. That, dude, and that's a great fucking mentality to have because yeah. everyone gets hung up on this. Oh, and I just talked about this on another podcast. Like, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm like, that's fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, oh, then I'm like, want, well, yeah. we're going to yeah. get better. Just, yeah. Like, that's like, for me, not being good enough is exciting. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm like, now I know what I need to fucking work on. I know I need to get better at this. I know I need to get better at fucking um, conversations with my wife. I know I need to get better with my patients, with my kids. I know I need to get better with my energy my sleep routine my fucking my arm bar defense my fucking <laughs> yeah. takedowns like do you know what i mean like yeah. everything in jiu-jitsu was i think on the back end of what you were saying the biggest thing i've learned from you um is enjoying loving the process yes and well, that's, that's why that's why i asked you about the, the the like when you won the title because i was I, I was wondering what your advice on someone is to not t get too focused on the outcome and more be present be, be present so, so and I, love the process i ruined my life that i think back to like not ruined my life but i i was really down over how much it didn't feel that special after i'd won it when yeah. reality like i got to, we'd train on a friday and then go for lunch i didn't have a real job yeah. do you know like i worked the doors a little bit did the bits and pieces did yeah. some privates whatever yeah. but like so much of my life passed me by 
that I didn't actually appreciate at the time on this. because I was focused yeah. on the belt. Tyson Fury said that. He said as soon as he fought Klitschko, he hated the camp. He hated the whole camp. He fought Klitschko and he was like, that, that. he's like, is this it? Yeah. Just beating this fucking heavy. The, Klitschko being champion for about fucking six, seven years. Oh, Never been beaten and fucking Fury schooled him. Mm-hmm. And he didn't feel anything. He said the difference now is he loves the training. Yeah. He fucking loves the training. The fights yeah. are bonuses. It's not necessarily really the training though. Do, like think reckon. about when we train on Friday and we'd go up to that cafe, we'd make them shove tables together and just hang yeah. about with yeah. my mates yes. during the middle of the day yeah. on a Friday. Now some people get an early finish on a Friday, yeah. but we'd have trained till half 11, be at the cafe at 12, sit there for a good hour and a half, just talking absolute yeah. shit. Yeah. Right. I and I've got that. to do that. I love that about my life. I it's love the that fact whole being like, part of I, something again. I, I didn't enjoy that. Left, I was always like, "Oh, that was mint." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why did I stop doing that? I like, yeah. I like, I like having no one answer to me. I like being yeah. able to look like, look, I'll just chill out during the day, <laughs> doing what I want. You yeah. know what I mean? And going to the gym, like, oh, back on the back at the gym last night. He doesn't chill out. No, <laughs> open, yeah. no one answered you. <laughs> oh, okay, now again the thing, eh? Back to his new corner, man. <laughs> no, his daughter. No, oh god, oh, daughter. yeah, we, oh, oh yeah. She's two. Is she yeah, she, yeah, she's, uh, she's a she's a proper little madam. Is she? Yeah, I mean the boys are wild. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Don't get us wrong, the boys yeah. are wild, but she's just like, yeah. Uh, she's you know, a proper little woman. Man. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're on a different level. Yeah, it's crazy. Di- what's there? Uh, Good though. My two kids are the complete opposite. What's Nina like? Yeah, like? crazy. She'll be on here soon. Oh, yeah. the man to come on. Legit. It'll probably be the most downloaded episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly. That's what you want, mate. Like. I'm telling you right now, it's a, it's, a, it's a fucking different level. So what's it? Al, what's next for you? What you got lined up? Adam has a big fight in September. Yeah. Uh, hopefully Davey Cage get, Warriors? Yeah. Yeah. And Davey's uh, got... Da- hopefully Davey I've, gets injury I've free. Got, uh, I mean, I've, obviously I've broken jaw at the minute, so I'm, I'm looking to go and fight, but I'm opening a restaurant as well. Uh, yeah, oh, yes, sick. we've got an Italian steakhouse opening. It's pretty nice. We'll have to yeah. all come up. So it's What's like it it's going to be called Cavello's, but it's like gin and cocktail bar. So we've got a proper cocktail. What do you call it? A mixologist. Right. Oh, nice. in. We've got some of the best chefs in the world. What the fuck's happening? Fingers and pies. <laughs> all <laughs> hey, so I'm really looking forward. It's like literally, I, I was on my way. I'm going to be on my way back there. I've been to pick up some flooring for the girls' toilets yeah. just there. And uh, this week, everything's starting to go into it. And it's nice. it's going to be like one of the places to eat around County Durham. Yeah. I can't wait for it. It's a, yeah. This is a total new venture for me yeah do you know what i mean but yeah. like no I've, I've worked, guess, yeah. yeah it's probably good for you to do it right now as well because you can't fucking yes can't exactly it, it's all just coming together and i'm literally there's been a lot of excitement about it and i, I really am i'm looking forward to it because it's total new i've yeah, never really done anything like this before i love food it's like alex is, <laughs> alex is surfing <laughs> i love food so i'm gonna be in there and i just uh, yeah this is like do you, oh, another, do you think you get another fight this year yeah yeah definitely yeah. definitely another fight Towards this the year, end of the year. Oh, november december i'm gonna give I mean, I'm starting training again this week. I've already started cl- cleaning up my diet and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I was supposed to start with my training yesterday. I didn't even get a chance because I was busy just doing things, running errands, trying to get the yeah. gym ready. What do you do? Just call you on that? Yeah, I'm just going to stay. I mean, I'm not. I'm, I'll, I'll maybe start pads. hitting pads. Yeah. yeah, I'll just go with like really, really just nice and easy as yeah. long and nothing where I can get hurt. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, in the gym, I'll start on my, on my Sunday condition and we'll just start hitting pads again. Like, it's been a while before I can roll and things like that. But we'll have stuff where we can get better. He'll be in the middle of open his restaurant, open another business, another business, yeah. and then just take a fight in seven days. <laughs> That's what he was doing. The week, the week, the week is off. The week is off. He rang us. He was like, look, I'm not going to be trained. I've got this, 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 and this. And oh, he was yeah, reeling off these on. businesses and like yeah. ideas he's had. And I was like, fucking hell, it's fucking lot going on. Yeah, Friday, you know, you, fight. You just have to stay busy. Yeah. yeah. Both of you have to stay fucking busy. You've got to keep your fucking mind active. Yeah, you know? that's it. Because like you say, if we're, if we're not solving problems, you're going to fucking make them up. Mm, that's it. Uh, do, you, do you just play many games? I play football manager and FIFA, so I, I'm, <laughs> I'm terrible. Manager. We're talking about this. So <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible. Podcast. We haven't done a single episode where we haven't mentioned nah. gaming. Oh, right. Yeah. So, I think so, it's huge. So, nah, like most games, I'm not going to sit and play a game where online with a bunch of losers. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna Dude, put it. I do this with it, with my son's fucking mates. I got in trouble off one of the mums the other week. A mum, sorry. Um, we're, f- we're playing this fucking Fortnite game. You okay? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, I think boys love it. I'm on the PlayStation. He's on the Xbox, right? And this little, little, this little nerd shot us, and I went for fuck's sake. <laughs> His mum didn't have headphones on. Oh, I got a yeah. message on Facebook saying, "Paul, can I have a word with you?" I said, "What's it about?" Just, I heard you swearing. Can you, oh. can you make sure you don't I would say, get your kid off the game. Yeah. <laughs> it's for winners. God. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, Gaming's a huge thing, I could play. I, I could play FIFA with you. Uh-huh. I'll, t- I'll put it on. I'll play season one. I'll do like a game and then halfway through the game, if it's, I haven't scored a couple of goals, I'll just turn uh-huh. off. Uh-huh. But like, if my, like, 
if my brain's not thingy and I'm starting over thing, picking up like my iPad and just playing football yeah. manager touch. I don't know why. I like I like now I've I've watched football all the season. Yeah. Do you know I was playing football manager without watching no, what's going football. on in real football? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know like just because it's it keeps you busy. It keeps us busy. Yeah. But I'm not gonna like Resident Evil, uh what's it with Grand Theft Auto? I get about uh, thirty yeah. minutes into them and then Forty five pound in the cupboard for the rest of the <laughs> you know, like I'm not into those yeah. games. I don't have yeah. the attention span for yeah. them. Uh -huh. I'll play like me and Melissa play Mario Kart. I can yeah. play that. Uh -huh. I can play Fight Night, new Fight Night comes out, I'll be playing that. Yeah. Just yeah. I don't like to play online, I like to play with someone so yeah. I can like yeah. talk shit. Yeah. I mean, you, you know what you can never there's hardly any games now where you can sit next to someone and play with them. Yeah, yeah like, that's, all, that's all, so all true. online, yeah. that, isn't it? Yeah. All online. I remember when I was younger, I used to sit with your mate and you'd be fucking like that on track and field. Put it on your leg. Double finger. Now you can't do that. Everything's yeah. online. It's, my, it's like everyone's on social as fuck. Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. Like, I like the social. I'm playing a game with my friend or uh, football manager to distract my mind, especially. That's what I do on flights. And do you know what it is? So, some, I'm a pain in the ass for it. Sometimes if I can't sleep, I'll just play then. Because yeah. it'll just like, it's monotonous and then boom. Yes. I'm yeah. out. But um, apart from that game, and I'm shit at them. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm shit. Yeah. I'm like, you'll fill, it'll fill a gap for you so you don't create loads of shit. And yeah. yeah. Them and You're not just sitting there thinking. Well, yeah. I like, I like to play, like, I'll go online and I'll play like, like a Sunday I played three games with Adam. He hasn't beat us in Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. not because I've been practicing, but like, he <laughs> <laughs> I, I listen to Pep Guardiola's third book, so like, I'm like, right, got oh, some tactics. Yeah. <laughs> three books, like three books, one from That's when really he was cool, at Barcelona, one from Bayern, and one from City. Really oh, right. good as well. Good. You like those books from other coaches, yeah. Or yeah. From other sports, from other sports is big because I don't feel like there's there's anyone who is an MMA coach like Carl's here. There's there's guys like Greg Jackson, and yeah. but also at the same time. I don't think they were like what Carlka teaches, and mm. they're trying to find that from like somewhere else. Taint in that I have to, purity, I have to find isn't it? it. Yeah, like uh, Phil Jackson, who coached the Chicago yes. Bulls, yeah. and was reading his book before uh, before the Last Dance. Last Dance came out, and then watching that, I was already like, I feel like I'm in the know. I know yes. what's going. I know what's going down. <laughs> yes. Um, his I book. Bought, I bought the basketball gear once. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I, I got the. You know the little the one that you stick on your door. <laughs> <laughs> you stick on your door. Got one of them, man. Uh, You're just like a child, on child, aren't you? Forty-eight to do this door. This house forty-eight. Holy shit! Call it twice, me. Don't tell him. Not even forty-eight. Thirteen. I'm forty next month. Are you? Aye. Forty. Duncan on Nina. Duncan I know. Nina, do we? Do you let Nina win? Do I fuck? No, what, do <laughs> what do you mean? Let her win, Nina? Win Nina I, smashes him. Uh, Nina's a little asshole. Well, like, yeah. Pizzas and everything. Uh, Seven years old, pizzas and everything. Love <laughs> other coaches from like Pep Guardiola is really good. Yeah. Um, I'd love that it'd be most of about what Jurgen Klopp's like. Like I loved oh, the I fact, do, yeah. I loved, yeah, Klopp, loved like. the fact he was doing Zoom meetings with all his guys at the same time as I was doing yes. Zoom class. And I was like, look, it's good enough for them. Get on here if you want to fight. Yeah. Mac never showed up for any of the he online shit. He was too shit. busy smashing me. That's why. <laughs> I was too busy getting them fit as fuck. I was running around <laughs> in dog piss he was, twice. Uh, he's done the work though. He's done a bit. He's done quite a bit of work. Like. Keeping, uh, keeping that ragging, timber off. Ragging his dad about, didn't he? Ragging his dad about in the laundrette. Uh, <laughs> the the uh, like, I buzzed off that. I'd love to know more about... Uh, do you know what I'd love to, like, follow a high-level coach like of a different them. sport and shadow them, but just to see what they do. Favourite favorite coach? The like, Garden Cop. I like... In other sports? Yeah. yeah. Ooh. I know I Carl like, loved Alex Ferguson, didn't he, Carl? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like Alex Ferguson. Yeah, really... I don't think I can say Alex Ferguson because Alex Ferguson knew you. everybody's name. Yeah. Uh, Alan Crouch said this from MUTV. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was like, Ferguson knew everyone. Mourinho yeah. knew no one. Didn't yeah. care. Didn't yeah. want to blank you in the corridor. Really? Where Ferguson was like, he was on it where everyone knew everyone's name. Now, Probably I'm, ter I'm terrible with names. Alex Ferguson same. didn't get hit in the head for 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No one like Mark for names, by no, the way. No, I'm the worst. Well, bad. Oh, bad. Oh, I didn't know yeah. Mark's name for about six months. You don't remember, Mate, I didn't either. I, I, I tried my best I to I said, what's that kid with the blonde hair's name? He said, Mark. I was like, that's not his name. That's not a real name. I mean, Matt. Is he called Matt? Mark without the R. Mark. I think it's Mark. I think he's spelled it wrong. No, I think it's Max. Max is what I've got. Max is the name. But yeah, probably after watching All or Nothing, you watch that? Oh, the Amazon I thing. Do. I love Pep. Yeah, I like. I have yeah, a. Dude, that I have a, a. That's great. I, I have a bit of a Pep Guardiola, Kevin De Bruyne thing going on. Uh, like the, Kevin De Bruyne is my favorite footballer. Yeah. I just like how quiet he is, but how good he is, and how yeah. competitive yeah. he is. But yeah. he's like sneaky competitive. Like, like, like he's not going to be in your face about it. But he's like, he's like, 
I want to yeah. be the best in the world. Yeah. 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 Um, I've got so, I've got a book for you. It's by this guy. You might you might be too young for this. It's football manager called Brian Clough. Right. Mate, you've read now like this book has book. Good right? one is it? Yeah. Ah, oh, he was this guy way back when was just he, he put it this way, he won the European Cup twice with Nottingham Home Forest. Forest. Yeah. This guy is fucking phenomenal. He said, I wouldn't say I'm the best manager in the world, but I'm in the top one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely in the top one, but I wouldn't say I'm the best. <laughs> <laughs> I've just I downloaded like Bobby Robson's because I love the documentaries on oh, Bobby Robson Bobby's and my grand, my grand, I loved Bobby Robson. Aye. My grand, I Legendary. loved Bobby, Bobby Robson. Robson so. is a fucking Bobby dude. Bobby Robson. And in fact, uh, Bill Walsh, Scott takes care of myself is probably my number one coaching book Bill ever. Walsh. Is he basketball? No, American San football. Francisco 69ers. American 49ers, football? 69ers, 69ers. 69 69 69 69 69 69 69 like a 69 <laughs> 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 six. Come on! Um, <laughs> Yeah, Bill yeah. Walsh, Scott takes care of itself. And yeah. someone I truly believe that if you, like that he puts all the process in place, that yes. he, he changed the 49ers from, 49ers, from a, just a team to a franchise in the sense that how the reception staff answered the phone was yeah. down to him. Yeah. Like he changed the whole organization yeah. to make it run like a well-oiled machine yeah. and took them from always finishing low down with a terrible record of wins and losses to yeah. winning the Super Bowl. Yeah. And he turned a a whole team around mm -hmm. from the business model. It's similar to what Ferguson did with Man United, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the just the word the score takes care of itself is something I think about. Yeah, the result every time, takes care of itself, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. Every time I go into a fight with a guy, I'm like, we've trained, we've prepared, I'll do my job now as long as they do their job there. The score yeah. takes care of itself. Yeah. And if we lose, we lose. Yeah. Mm. As long as we it's haven't uncontrollable. As long it? as we yeah. haven't like uh left stones unturned, as long as they haven't shortcut on this or shortcut that. Yeah. Score, so that's why I'm horrible. Because yeah. yeah. I'm like Stop shortcutting. Yeah. Score has to take care of itself. <laughs> yeah. But like, that's probably the number one book yeah. on, and I learned probably a lot of business from that. I mean, so. there's loads of things that could apply to that school score. It could take care of being in fucking shape. It could be going on holiday and being able to take your fucking top off. You know yeah. what I mean? There's so many, there's so many areas. That Universal. Like that, that, uh, just, just, again, it's that whole committing to the fucking process, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You commit to that process and you don't cut corners and you just take it fucking step by step, day by day. And the results fucking inevitable in it. That's what. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely amazing, amazing. What a fucking time to end. What a I'm way. Fifteen minutes late from your last call. It is what it is. Thank you very thank much. You. Cheers, mate. Nice one. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Bye, bye. Nice one, pal. Bye, bye. Fucking fast.